Hello and good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you happen to be. Uh, my name's Ben and welcome to Cybernation Uncensored and to Actung Cthulhu Operation Ultimatum. Today, and for however long it takes everyone here to die horribly, uh, we're going to be plunging our brand new agents into the depths of France on a strange mission that will lead them to see things that they may never have expected nor wanted to see. However that's going to end is very much up to them. If it goes my way, it will be fire, corpses and destruction. But yeah, people have a horrible tendency to stop me doing the things I like doing. Now, uh, I'm Ben. I, I will be the game runner for this evening and leading these wonderful, wonderful people uh, through whatever hell they have visited on themselves. So, in no particular order, uh, I'm going to throw out some character names and let you introduce yourselves, if we are happy to do so. So, first and foremost, leading the charge, he says, splitting through paper. We're going to go over to the wonderful Julia Sharp. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Maxwell. I'm playing Julia Sharp, the team's engineer firecracker. Wonderful, thank you very much. And Bodie Dietrich. Yes, hello. I am Bodie Diedrich, who is uh, the team's con artist, and my name is Sean Flo from Roll to Cast. Thank you very much. And then moving swiftly onwards to the wonderful Leonard the Leopard. I'm not going to try and pronounce that because I'll brutalize it. Yeah, I wasn't going to do it either. Um, it's just Leo. <laughs> it's just Leo. Uh, but hi, I'm Corey. I'm going to be playing Leo today, tonight, this afternoon, wherever you are. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And last but of course not least, Anna Purita Bakshi. Hey everybody, my name is Jesse Nakalia, and I'm going to be playing Anapurna Bakshi, the occultist for the team. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for that, everyone. And of course, welcome to all of our wonderful viewers. Now, if we are all ready, we'll dive straight on in. Okay. So, it's the late May 1939. Dunkirk Harbour has been destroyed. The Belgian army has, sur has surrendered and hundreds of thousands of troops await evacuation across the English Channel through Operation Dynamo. German forces are advancing and the British Expeditionary Forces BEF are in retreat. Over 60,000 Allied soldiers have been killed, wounded, or captured, and the BEF has had to abandon arms, vehicles, stores, and hundreds of tanks, to say nothing of the lives lost. But from May 26th to June 4th, more than 340,000 Allied troops are evacuated using the military and civilian vessels, some via great British destroyers but many smaller, lighter civilian volunteer craft crossed the channel to bravely deliver the miracle of Dunkirk, saving countless lives. Throughout, the British Royal Air Force and the German Luftwaffe fight an ongoing battle in the sky. But for today, we focus not on that, but on our intrepid agents who have arrived, who arrived deep in France after a whirlwind briefing from Section M one of the many occult organizations working against the activities that others care not to learn about. You've been issued a simple job. A transport, a transport uh, convoy deep in France has been ambushed, destroyed, carrying vital equipment, information, and potentially more with it. You've been saddled up, issued your bikes, and sent out. Each of you ride solely, alone, and with one another. As you travel along through a muddy wasteland that used to be a small clearing, you see the remains of three trucks, a jeep, and a tank. You can readily picture what happened. The convoy left the tree cover nearby to avoid rough terrain to the west. But, that to put them out in the open, Clearly, they're near timing. 
as a squadron of Luftwaffe struckers pass overhead. Or so you soon assume. German planes attacked and obliterated portions of the convoy. The vehicles have been overturned and sit in flames in rubble, barely resembling what they once were. It may have been bad timing, or perhaps the Germans knew they were coming beforehand, and may have been looking for them. It's impossible to tell at this time. From immediate impressions, you get the, uh, the um, thought that this may have only happened a few hours ago, and there distinctly seem to be no survivors. All that remains is the stench of oil and fuel mixed with shredded metal, churned earth, and spilled blood. As you pull up, your bike slowly maturing out, placing your feet into the mud. You observe the situation and, for possibly the second time, turn to your allies. Take one another in and prepare to work out what exactly has happened, where the supplies are, where the, where the uh, researchers are, and frankly, what in God's name went on here? So, as you step off of your bikes, what do you do? So I feel uh, Bodhi, as he does, step off and he adjusts his vest. Well, they said that but there is some information that is uh, gone missing. Perhaps we find out if... Uh, Maybe not every stone was left unturned. Maybe some of the information is still there, no? Very How many guess. trucks are there? Sorry. Three. Three trucks. Uh, would, would there be any... Does anybody see any tracks that might have led off into the woods? Well, if you're asking, can I ask you for a difficulty one Reason observation check. That you may. Uh, okay. Two D twenty, yeah. Yeah. Two D twenty. Here we go. First roll of the night. Uh, reason Easy observation, money. yeah. That's correct. Wow. Uh, difficulty. Difficulty one. one. So you only yeah. need the one success. Just well, good news. I got the one success. Yeah. That's all you need. Wonderful. Well done. Thank you very much. You immediately step away from the bikes and start to pick your way through the ruinous rubble. <clears throat> and inside, you do find a, a series of tracks, as well as a corpse. One body is distinctly trapped under the worst of the rubble, a loose piece of metal having severed their stomach and split them in twain. Viscera covers the ground and mixes with the dirt and filth. Um, and from your original briefing and the photo they handed you of the lead researcher, Professor Gilbert Pascal, you immediately make the recognition. His eyes lifeless, distinctly. Of course, you know, not having legs does that to a person. Especially when rather brutally severed. Leading away from him, however, you can see disturbances in the mud, droplets of blood, and a short trail that leads away from the scene off into the tree line. Also within kind of easy visual distance, though, uh, in the back of one of the trucks that has been overturned and sitting off to your left, uh, you can see a series of a large selection of crates and boxes that lie within. Uh, I found Pascal. He's not in the best of shape. I mean, wounded or dead? Rather dead. Shite. Oh, I don't know. I think um, Bodhi will head beeline straight for those crates. His, his kind of thing is to salvage if there is anything still here that is immediately salvageable. Um, Bodhi will headline straight for the crate so he can identify the contents of what is inside. Yeah, I, Annapurna will join you because this could be arcane. W would I know the nature of the research these researchers were working on? 
You weren't briefed exactly on what it is these guys have been looking into. It was very much on a need-to-know basis, yeah. and at the time of the briefing, you didn't need to know. Interesting. Hey, um, I would like to use one of my features. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would like Fire to away. use Bizarre Swipe Insight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which means I Hold get on. to ask a question without passing the skill test and just generate one threat while doing it. Well, I'll thank you for the threat. You're welcome. And what question would you like to ask? What kind of research were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> right. You have a little glance over them after stepping away from uh, Pascal's corpse and close your eyes for a moment. And in that darkness, you plunge through what may be linked to the man. You get images of deep sea cities and strange objects weapons, armor, and you distinctly gain this inclination that whatever research they had been plunging into involved lost cities, buried places, and how to take the secrets therein and weaponize them. Bakshi, are you, are you okay? I've had one of my trademark visions. It well, appears that, that, well, it could be good, it could be bad, but it certainly seems to be for the worse that these researchers, they're on our side, yeah? Very much so. And for now. Uh, our boys here were looking into rather occult ma matters. Well, section this, Maybe M. something we're going to have to take a, take a close gander at. Section M, no? Makes a lot of sense. It's not for our eyes and ears, but that is why we were chosen, no? Mm. You you said you saw... Well, you said uh, we saw tracks that were leading away, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, you were... Heading in the opposite direction to the boxes you saw still inside one of the trucks. So all of you see that? The, the tracks leading away towards danger, of course, but uh, what else is what we are doing here, yeah? Uh, tracks like these are treads, tires, or like a scuffle footprints. Footprints, okay. A, a combination of footprints and well, do me an inside observation check, please. With difficulty one, excellent. Okay. I, would, I would love to do that. Uh, it's inside, uh, so it's gonna be uh, 10. Uh, what did you say? Difficulty was well, sorry, a difficulty one, yay. Just one success. One success. One success. Perfect. You have a good look over the body, uh, over the um, tracks, and you distinctly make out boot prints. It's fairly small ones. Um, and what appears to be a body having been dragged through. The disturbance is irregular and oddly shaped, as if whatever they were pulling was moving at the time. And, uh, the trail's down. Please go on. Bodhi will, will look over at the rest of you. How many of you have had interactions with um, the Germans? Not me included, but the, uh, the Nazis before. And do the cars count? Yeah. I guess my... Uh, the reason I ask is what you must be aware of is that if one of the researchers or all of them have been taken, it is not good and time will be of the essence. So if we are to do something about this, we should be moving quicker. No time to dawdle. You understand? Agreed. Let's just, before we go on, let's just make sure that anything isn't left behind here. Just I waste out whatnot. And, yeah. I'd be interested to see um, what remains of those crates. Do you want to look at the crates and I can look at him, just see if maybe looking at the researcher, seeing if he has any like papers or anything left on him. You have a little poke around um, and don't find anything immediately on his body. Um, however, <clears throat> or at least nothing you particularly wanted to find. I'm going to spend two fret. 
And as you start to just dig through the body, um, pushing his coat or what remains of it just mm -hmm. to one side, there is a slight ticking sound. And you say a very oddly shaped bomb pointing out from under it in your rough direction. You hold yourself just at the last moment before you disturb it as much as the body. Mm -hmm. But it seems to have been pushed in post-mortem. Okay. As if the body has been lifted, the explosive shoved underneath, and then very carefully rested back down on top of it. Um, we might to back away a bit. What? What is wrong? Uh, picking time bomb, just not good for any of us. Is that as a bomb? You kind of... <laughs> As you move back, you notice the ticking increases in speed. Oh, that's... Okay, and oh, no. it's getting faster. Right. Yep, let's go. Yeah, Brody will bolt. Forget the others. Like, if, if there is a bomb, time is of the essence now even more than ever. So yes, he'll look to get clear, hopefully. Wonderful. In order, then, uh, I'm going to ask everyone for a coordination athletics check with a difficulty of one. But I would recommend you do this in order, because if any of you have a particular lower skill, allow those who are better at it to go first and potentially generate momentum for those following to have a higher chance. Um, so hey, I have uh, a pool of nine. On that, on that note, then, um, Annapurna mm -hmm. does have a talent band of brothers, so I think we yep. have one momentum already. Wonderful. Yeah, because we that started the scene with more more members than momentum. Correct. Perfect. So you generate one immediately. So you've got it there if you need it. Beautiful. I have twelve for my pool, by the way. Nine. I've I've twelve as well. I, I however, I I do have demolitions as a talent. You could attempt to disarm it. Hey, if you want to stay close to the bone, please by, by, be my guest. I got seven, so you go ahead and roll first. So I could use it later, but, um... You're not wrong. No, no, Wait. please, by all means, if you want to... Pick. Pick. to Worst case scenario, I get... Pick. Pick. I... All right, I'm going Pick. in! Pick. Um, yep, I'm going. I'm going to try and defuse it. I shall support One you four. from back here, okay? I appreciate it, you fucking Jerry. You're welcome. Give me a coordination engineering test with a focus and explosives it is going to be difficulty two that is theoretically up my alley so let's see yeah make sure you don't die because if you do that explosion goes up in the air and then they know where we are i'm concentrating here i'm happy uh, all right that is uh two successes ah oh. nothing special but exactly two oh. wonderful an, you an 11 and a six you hurry through, busting out your kit um, and the bits and pieces you have on you, and within a few moments, as it reaches the final accelerated, you break the interior uh, mechanism and stop the detonation. The entire me it goes dead in your hands. You are worried. Is it going to go off? No, this is a paperweight now. Unless I make it not, but just. Can I just Shake it off, shove it in oh. my pack of assorted detritus. Could you not wave you it around add? as much, please? That is still making me very nervous. Just take a tipper, it'll calm you down. Oh, around you, I am never calm. Oh, Jerry. If we might, I believe there's the matter of these crates in the back of this truck, Stu. Um, well, go for it. No one around to look over our shoulder. I intend to. Uh, that is what am I? What am I rolling, Ben? Am I rolling? So, yeah, you make your way over, um, having okay. kind of moved back towards the trucks after the threat of detonation. Uh, the truck, the boxes and crates inside. There's a good half dozen of them. Each and every one of them is still sealed. Um, First and foremost, as you've just arrived there, and you've already been looking for tracks, you do realize that just on the edge, a on-ramp has been lowered. 
uh, to allow easier access to the inside. Uh, and this bears no sign of damage whatsoever, as if someone has come up to the area, set it down after the ex the attack happened. Mm. Mm. As if the crates you... may have been placed here after the fact. Potentially. You can see just lying on the wall, um, attached, literally attached to it, there is a metal sheet with a piece of paper stamped on top. Uh, the symbol of Section M lingering down on the bottom left-hand corner of it. A very cursory glance identifies it as an inventory report. Oh. Well, Stating... Were a supply drop? No. That... Stating on the report, oh. seven boxes. You see only six. Does it state what is in the boxes? Does the inventory list go into detail? It feels it would if you could get past the mass of black ink that seems to just be coating every other letter that follows after the exact number of crates, the rest having been brutally and efficiently redacted. Well, that is helpful. Not entirely uncommon. Um, well, uh, Body will uh, is getting a little bit impatient, so shall look to break open one of the boxes. Easily done. Uh, if you can make me a brawn athletics check, please. Oh. Again, difficulty one. He is not a brawn. Just as you, you, let's do it. <laughs> you go to put your muscles into it. Let's see how it goes. How many muscles does Brody have? Hopefully, more than one. Uh, what was the difficulty? Sorry, one. Just one. Um. Oh, did I? Just one success. You crack open the first box and do so with strained muscles, but you release the lid. Um, and inside you find a variety of strange items inside. Uh, books, small oddities. Things that you just don't have any kind of Frame concept of, of what they may or may be. Yeah, exactly. Anything particularly arcane? <laughs> they reek of it. Ooh, In what yeah. manner, you have no idea. But that there's nothing natural in that box bar the books themselves that would not scream at you that they are not man-made. Actually, will like carefully, gingerly uh, place his hands in, lift one of the books, and as he has a cursory look over the front, kind of holds it up to Bakshi. Uh, this is perhaps more your wheelhouse, no? Absolutely. Uh, I will take... It's a book, yeah? It's a book. What you're handing me? Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the book and take a little take a little glance at it. See if I can't glean anything quickly, just based on what it could be. I, I don't need to read the thing right now, but I'd like to know maybe what it what the focus of the book is. Yeah, I'm going to give you the you other title. Book. Yeah. <laughs> you flip it open um, upon immediately noting the front cover itself is unadorned but incredibly leathery. Oh, well, this seems... Very black and slick. Hmm. Seen this before? You have, have you? Start. I've lived a life. What? I've studied a great number of these tomes. What? Um, I find out we're out here in the middle of bumfuck country nowhere, got a what? A library stock. It is rather, rather odd that books of this, this ilk should be out here. I wonder what else it says on the inside of the book. You open it up and start flicking through and find a script you have no knowledge of. Read it. Read it. <laughs> the words, the manner of writing mean nothing to you. You hmm. neither recognize it or have even the vaguest idea of what hand may have written it. Fascinating. It is. Uh, go ahead, sorry. No worries. You also see, as you kind of flick through, uh, apart from the text itself, pictures drawn images more precisely of 
deep sea creatures. Mm. See long tendrils leaning across one as you see a uh, the figure of some squid-like being um, plastered across a double spread uh, double spread of the page. Portions of it partitioned off and drawn in greater detail at every sections. Deeper still, you find uh, images of mollusks, but gargantuan in size from the small references they give to other, well, other sea life that surrounds it. You flip through more and more and more and just find more of the same. Mm. I'll snap close the book and put it in my satchel. This is, this does not bode well. We should probably begin the hunt, yes? That is what I've been saying. If we are all satisfied, no more bombs or octopus on pages, we can maybe look for A, missing scientists who are probably being tortured right now, and uh, B, one crate is missing. So perhaps that crate is more important than the rest. Yes. I fear we may have more octopi in our future at this rate. Mm. Not a fan. There are still personally. This far in land. Eh. There are still a couple more, a few more boxes left unopened. Oh, damn you. Okay. <laughs> maybe, um, maybe we pick one and then move on. From the inventory, does it look like? I obviously said most of it is redacted, but it does it. Mm -hmm. It does it look like you can tell any distinction between the two? Like one has less items or more items or any differing way in which we might be able to look at in lieu of just going through and cracking over every single box um because there's five more there is there any way or are there any different markings on the different boxes or do they all look pretty well identical in that regard they're fairly identical on a quick glance um but if you do me let's say a reason academia check yes please difficulty one eight that's gonna be just get under a 10, please. Uh, yeah, that'll be one success. Thank you very much. Wonderful. That's all you need. A few minus twos from chat as well. Always good. You pop open and you you take the inventory report and just kind of glance over it, trying to deem any sort of information on just the length of each individual entry. Hmm. Uh, you do find... <clears throat> that the third marked uh, the third crate as best as you can deviate uh, just in the positioning of them seems to be carrying more in it you give it a small push just to test the weight and it matches up roughly it is a much much heavier item almost pulled my back doing the other crate if anyone else would like to try and open the crate it'd be much appreciated right I should give it a hand and try. It's the the pool to crack open something. Uh, it'll be born athletics difficulty one. Okay. Um. Hey, one success. Hey, perfect. You make your way over and just pop the next one over again. They're not exactly easy to do, but they're done. Inside, the first thing that just catches your eye is a large marble bust. A middle-aged looking ch uh, chap um anyone with two or more ranks in academia will recognize the man as john d john d who who let's carry on john d <laughs> yeah here that's his middle value to you here catch oh he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna keep rummaging through this i'm I'm looking for munitions, anything that's useful. Actually, <laughs> useful to, useful to yeah. me. You continue to and dig through. I'm just passing. <laughs> well, wow. I may have jumped on that too a little bit. Not fast. me. No. <laughs> John that's, for the un that's for the ed educated to work out, not that's, me. That's for the bloody nerds and poindexters. Did you say Academia 2? You would know who John D was? Correct. I have Academia 2. Yeah, I got three. Wonderful. Oh, well. Well, in that well. case, you're just showing off, frankly. <laughs> uh, he was an old English, uh, very, very uh, old ma English mathematician, astronomer, astrologer, 
and more. He dealt with the occult. Well, this is all painting a rather, rather particular picture, isn't it? What picture is that? Well, the occult, astrology, uh, nothing that we didn't expect Section M to be dealing with already, but... Confirmation this is, is nice. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's a step. Mm. It's hard to seem to know as well as Section M was looking at it, yeah, but it's, the Germans are not above experimentation, so... Something that Section M is interested in, which the Germans might be as well. Counterintelligence and whatnot. I say German. Yeah. I'm also German, but the other Germans, not me. The... Right. No, no, no. You're, 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 the, 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 you're the good one. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to take that, but yes, I agree. <laughs> you continue to dig through the box, and just under where the that the bus was, uh, you find a small glass case. You lift it out, and inside uh, the case itself, there seems to be a layer of what appears to be lead. Don't lick it. What are you doing? Yeah, I, I wouldn't... It's uh... a taste test. It's fine. No. Very well. Heavy, me heavy metal is part of the job. Um, yeah. This that is not doesn't appear to be any kind of radiator, carburetor, any like engine bit. This is it's like an arcane art, but like curio it box. It's, it just it seems to be quite literally a box. As you pick it up and have a proper look around, someone has welded a lock onto it, or at least a catch. Ooh. Yeah, here, it's nerds. Here, give it. Very well. I, I don't know that it's advisable that we open a, a, a lead box. It seems potentially dangerous. Right there. It's, it's, it's right there. there. I'm not going to stop you. It's just. Should be academics. Do we opinion. want to take a vote? Do we want to take a vote? Should I open it? Open just open the box. Go Go ahead. Oh, I can open the box. Okay. What is in the box? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm going to open the box. the box. What's in the box? So you gonna take, take the lid and just like co take cover behind the box lid of like the crate lid of pride off like just in case we've already dealt with one of them this whole game we're essentially so far just a moving company but like everything we're opening is so stressful already <laughs> good that's as it should be you unclick the la uh, clasp and start to open it almost immediately there's a slow blue glow oh. that begins Whoa. to emanate out quite light um Almost electric. You've only cracked it open at this point. You want to fully open it. Let's see. How, how smart is, is Leo? The keeper in me knows, but the, the character has no fucking clue. Yeah, Leo's gonna open it. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, I, I think upon seeing the light, then we'll be like, uh, let's everybody back up just a little bit. I'll, I'll take one for the team. Put on your chap. You. You swing the box open. And inside, there is a single, small, bright blue crystal. Glowing vibrantly. It doesn't seem to be doing anything other than glowing. There's a shifting to it. But... If it was going to react or explode, you assume it would have done so by now. I'll look at the rest of the group. Uh, it's okay. It's just glowing. Yeah. Something. They are not meant to do that. Radium does all the time. Sorry. And we should not be close to it when it does that. Do you... Does anybody want to take a look at it? See if maybe. Uh, yes, very you much know so. Oh, okay. Oh. I'll I'll hold it for you. Just right. you know. Appreciated. Um, yeah, of course. Does this look like anything I would have any, I would have researched at all throughout my, my search for arcane knowledge? Hmm. It's not something you recognize. Hmm. Very interesting. 
I've, I've never come across anything like this in any of my studies. Yeah. This could be... This could be very important. Write a dissertation on after the war, yeah? I will, thank you. I intend to. I'll write it me. for you in the meantime. Uh, oh, if, if you would, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. Also... And I will gently close it and stick it in my bag. Bodhi's also going to be taking this opportunity um, to take photos of these things as they come up. Um, mm -hmm. He actually... He's going to be one to take... Like, he doesn't know if we'll ever see these things again once we bring this back to Section M, so it's good to have a record of it. It's not something he'll particularly tell Section M about, um, but he wants this knowledge. So, you know, when the when the gem, uh, when the, the glowing mm -hmm. thing comes up, when we see the crates, when we've got the book, um, he'll be snapping photos of these as they come up. Easily done. No trouble whatsoever. You snap a few shots of everything that's come out of those crates. Well, everything interesting. Have you sent it? done so. Sorry, you go. Sorry. No, no, that's all. Um, once, of course, you've finished doing so, you pack up the small, um, the small glass box and just kind of cast your eyes across the area one more time. Can I ask for anyone to make one more insight observation check of difficulty two please inside observation. one person oh correct I anyone have... can make it i have a 14. oh yeah you do that better. yeah i'll do that he's a he's an observant nervous boy like a meerkat um that is going to be two successes wonderful did you oh, say it was yeah. a challenge of one Challenge of two. Oh, so well, got exactly I got what you it. Yeah, celebration. As you well. uh, finish up taking your shots, uh, you just kind of stand just at the edge of the uh, truck, which is just raised slightly off the ground, um, and glance just across the road a small amount. Hmm. As you do, you become aware of a trail that you had yet to notice. Hidden more, more than slightly by the debris that is laden around the area you see a large line of broken dirt that leads directly from the truck you're in behind the ve uh, vehicle that is currently collapsed on top of uh, pascal and pushing away from the uh, from your location off again down towards a tree line and then just disappearing and this is a different um, trap than the one that we initially noticed when we came up? Very much so. The initial track you noticed were footprints, the signs of a body being dragged. This appears to be the crate. Missing crate being dragged away. The oddity to it is that you notice not a single footprint. So this is immediately going to catch uh, Bodhi's interest. And at first, wordlessly, he steps down and puts himself low to study. And then he kind of looks over his shoulder. Uh, yeah, we have... Oh, this, this is interesting. Uh, to say all of you will come out here for a moment. Uh, look, simple lesson. Usually, when something is taken away, there is a, a human or a vehicle that drags that thing away, no? Much like the prints we saw before. Interesting to note. Do you see footprints? Because I do not see footprints. Do you see tire tracks? Because I do not see tire tracks. Yet, very clearly, the crate. That is the missing crate. Unmistakable. So we've located it. Yeah. You, you, you're missing the important thing. What took it away? Look. Nothing. Well, so you're like like suggesting the crate I'm, moved on its own? I'm not suggesting anything. I only go by the facts. The facts state the crate, it either had legs and walked or... Maybe one of those flying mollusks came by from that book and just ferried it away. That could well be the possibility. Uh, we should investigate this. 
We know our body was taken in one direction. We know our crepe was taken in the other direction. Oh. Are you saying Z split up? No, I'm Terrible. saying we search the thing. I'm saying we go after the crate. Oh. I tend to agree. <laughs> Not the... In the actual possibly live in person that well, the we body is dragged it's rather dead i i assume yeah see the the problem is as i told you earlier the this person is probably in the hand of the nazis which means they're either dead or dying or fate worse than both we were not tasked necessarily it was get their stolen goods back and rescue the prisoners there is list of priority this is the priority Lord have mercy. Fine. I'll go after your crate. Better be fucking worth it. Yeah, good. Birdie so will, will feel that way. Of education. Yeah. Birdie will head off down the stupid no person giving tracks. Hopefully it's just a walking crate. We can all hope. You hop off the edge of the truck and into the track of uh, the crate and just start following it along. Um, it travels along the dirt road for a small period of time before hitting a line of grass which descends down a hill into the tree line that follows. Um, even from your perspective you can see the trees are quite dense the moment you enter into them, it's more of a short forest uh, that leads out a good distance. It peaks and follows a series of hills going off in the same rough direction the crate seems to be heading. And considering that you passed earlier, as you kind of squint and have a deeper look into the tree line, uh, you can make out small broken branches um, a little lower to the ground. You see disturbances in the foliage where something looks like it's been dragged through. You're fairly sure you can pick up a solid trail heading into the trees and deeper. All you need to do is follow it. And it still looks relatively the same in, in terms of there's no set kind of footprints dragging it, but the thing itself has just been carving a path through here. Very much so. You can't see a single set of footprints. You can't see tire tracks, treads, anything. No, no potential means of propulsion or being dragged is is the terrain too uh treacherous for us to take our motorcycles it would be dangerous beyond all belief though if you were talented enough you could try it would also make a lot of noise such as the us issue yes <laughs> have my rifle off my motorcycle all right let's get a hunting And uh, he and he hates to agree, but he will um, kind of reach into his into his vest and pulls out um, his his small pistol, um, and will in a, inexpertly uh, have it by his side. Um, he's obviously not one that knows. Ooh, he's not very comfortable with it, but he's he's not silly enough to presume that he doesn't need to have himself armed for these lovely sort of missions. Just uh, think of it as like a, it's like a camera. You point it where you want it to go and click. Oh. Flash, bang, there you go. Yeah, but it tends to produce memories I would rather forget. This is far. I got you, it'll be fine. Shall we? Yeah, not exactly calmed, Bodhi will <laughs> head on forward. You descend down the hill and start making your way into the, the tree line, following the tracks as best you can. The deeper you get, the harder it gets to track. The light levels dim and night slowly begins to creep towards you, twilight setting in as the sun slowly fades. I'm going to need at least one person, I say at least, I need one person to make me an insight survival check, please, to follow the trail. It is going to be difficulty two. And any Viable. one person can attempt it. Hey, Ben. <clears throat> yes. Could I spend a fortune on this scene? Of course you can. Um I I would like that the uh I, it doesn't need to make things that much easier, but easier, that it's a full moon. So there's quite a bit of ambient light. Accepted. 
As you continue to plumb the depths of the forests, the full moon starts to break through, cutting through the clouds and sending a good degree of moonlight cutting through the boughs and sending small rays of pale light around you, enough to give you a clearer path. We'll reduce the difficulty of the survival check from two to one. Ooh. I will still need someone to make it. I do yes, not have, have my any. Today, I do not have any points in survival. Uh, so if anyone has I... points in it, yeah, it's it's what again? Insight and survival. Insight survival difficulty one. I have, I have ten, and uh, I also I have, have a tracker talent. As well. Oh, you have a what talent? So I have a tracker talent. Oh. So when he attempts a survival test to track animals, people, or otherworldly creatures, first bonus d twenty he buys is free. Perfect. Well, I'm going to give you an ex. I'll let you use that one then. So that's three d twenty instead of one or two even. Words. Well, I got I, I I got one. I got one success. Perfect. That's all you needed. In oh, which case, Leo, you lead the way, cutting your way deep into the forest and following the tracks wherever they may lead. Oh, which is um, where the fur. Yes. There's a Bakshi darling. Is there a chance that werewolves are real? Just wondering. Well, there's been some. There's been some discussion of it in the, in the academic fields. Um, uh, it's it's a possibility. Who? Cool. We've yet cool. to capture. What, and deck, what academics are discussing this? Well, arcane academics, yeah. Not quite done. Sorry. Uh, just... <laughs> It feels like these academics are discussing things that have no basis in reality. I realize we are we are chasing a, a walking crate, but point notwithstanding, surely there are. Which is going this way, by the way. Oh, shit. Oh, excellent. Let's go. Yeah. You follow it along, and which is where we find our first scene for the evening Ooh. ending. One momentum is removed from the pool. Dropping you back down to zero, but as we approach the new scene, we have a wonderful talent that brings it straight back up to one anyway. <laughs> so, led by Leo. <clears throat> Excuse me. After about 20 minutes of following the drag marks of the crate through the trees, you come along, eventually, the ruins of a medieval castle. Oh. Built in the local style, the arches and fortifications remind you equally of cathedrals and keeps. The crumbling stone structure stands on the top of a hill, a long road leading through a break in the forest, away from where you were. Strictly in the opposite direction you have come, so you don't feel that it will lead back. The structure stands, as I say, mostly decayed. Its upper floors and towers falling apart, but the wall apparently still intact. Inside, you see a bright blue light arcing with an electrical energy, flickering against the walls of the bailey, casting jagged shadows against the full moon. Parked at the base of the hill, you see a, a German Kuppelwagen. Its engines idling and its headlights push pointed up at the dirt trail that winds towards the gates. Three German soldiers stand besides the vehicle, staring up at it. From your hiding point in the forest, you can see worry and confusion etched across their features. Their weapons hanging loosely from, fi uh, from firing belts around their waists. They're talking. You can see their lips moving, but what they're saying is beyond you at this distance. Um, Bodhi would, uh, more than anything, love to attempt to get close enough um, to be able to listen in to what they're saying, if not read their lips to do so, because he, Bodhi does speak German. Um, and it's a benefit. I would, um, no, I don't want to use that yet because I don't want to use a, oh, you know what? Fortune's here to be used. Let's absolutely do it. Um, I would like to use a talent 
Um, Go for it. Which is cool under pressure. Um, when the situation mm -hmm. gets tough, and I feel like being able to sneak up on three German soldiers who are literally guards, potentially, um, Diedrich just takes a deep breath and gets the job done. When they attempt a stealth skill check, they may spend a fortune point to automatically succeed at that skill test, but they generate no momentum. Well, that's not a bad thing to have at all. If you're happy to spend the fortune, then. Oh, fortune favors the brave. Let's do it. Exactly. You sneak on forwards, taking as many quick movements as you can, moving from tree to tree, moving up along the hill that slowly kind of leads towards where they're sat, idling, and the castle itself. You get to the point where you're confident enough that you actually reach more or less up to their car, hiding on the other side of it, and able just to overhear every word slipping from their mouths. The discussion is less of a discussion and more of a set of orders being issued by a fairly tall, yet heavily built man with strong blonde hair tied in a ponytail behind his neck. His eyes never break from staring up at the hill as he issues words back to the men behind him. We have to watch and wait. More are coming. When we move in, we find whatever they are hiding up there, and we take it. Damn it, crabs. Do not move closer than you need to. Watch the area. Any further noise, radio back. Nothing more. That you see a note of approval from the other two as they grumble their uh, affirmation. And the apparent officer steps away. You see him just muttering to himself as he reaches into a back pocket and pulls a beaten up pack of cigarettes, pulling one free and just lighting it um, as he stands on the edge of the dirt road and just stares off into the distance, continuing just to grumble and mutter to himself as the other two move up the trail slightly and just very cautiously grip their weapons in place and watch the castle. At that point, conversation dies off, and you continue to hide. So, um, and they were, I, and they were speaking German. Yes, they were. They were distinctly speaking German. Yeah. Uh, Bodhi will 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 uh, skulk his way uh, back to where um, I presume uh, the group were waiting at a safe distance. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so curious, I'm curious, sir. The big scary foreboding castle we see before you. Uh, something is in there. Something they are watching. Something that they want to get. Uh, so, whether or not. Did he notice? Well, I mean, more importantly, did he notice that that's where the crate tracks led into the building? Could he ascertain that? I will need you to make another insight observation check for that. Oh, uh, <laughs> Thanks to the improved light level from the full moon, I'm going to keep it as difficulty one. Oh, danke schön. Ah, that is two success, so I believe that is a, a one momentum to add to our pool. That is indeed. Well done. First bonus momentum earned. Ah. The crate itself, you do, you, you follow the tracks exactly to where you are now, um, and at which point you notice that it hit the edge of the, the um, uh, kind of greenery you were in, the edge of the forest, and then just disappears. Okay. <laughs> there is a distinct depth to the end of the trail, as if the crate had been pushed down on briefly. Yeah. And... Tell you what, Leo, can you make me a quick, we will say, reason survival check with difficulty one? Tracking will help here. So you do get your first bonus, D20, for free. Hmm. Beautiful. Um, that is two successes. Hey, good job. And Even better. Actually, I got a one on my trip. So then three. that's three successes. Okay. So you generate two momentum off of that, bringing you up to a total of four. Oh, oh. Damn. Sorry. Therefore, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, you have a quick look over it, um, just as uh, it's pointed out to you. Um, it does depress, and then the impact site seems to pull up and away. There's a large amount of dirt that seems to have spread across from where it is, pushing in the direction of the castle. And thanks again to the light of the full moon, you can see globules and impact sites of dirt. As it seems, the crate hasn't so much disappeared, it has been lifted into the air. Dirt seemingly dripping from its base onto the ground and off in the direction of the castle itself. Oh, the crates. I'm gonna tell that to them. It seems like it's just flying, yes. Yeah. So first it was walking and now it's flying. How is that um, possible? Well, it could have been lifted I'm distracting by it. above it. What, what vehicle or things that you know can drag the crate through the forest, through the clearing, make no visible impressions, and then, poof, gone? There are really? horrors beyond our comprehension that could potentially do something like this. I'm not in the business of entertaining fantasies. There is a reason for everything. We just don't know it yet. Perplexing, yes. Unrealistic, nine. In my in my collection of personal notes from an occult tome, yep. is this something that I might have might have sketched or might have taken note of, being as how I'm, you know, a researcher for Section M? You know distinctly that there are creatures that are otherworldly enough to be able to fly. Mm. Um, I will check just briefly. Uh, did you pass on all of the information you heard? Or just what you've said so far? Um, I will... No, I'll be fair. What I said was what I said. Um, so, yeah, Bodhi... Bodhi mm, that's all he's basically said at this point. He hasn't... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I left out, but if I left out something, be as it may. That's absolutely fine. Um, on the information you've got of just something seems to have picked the crate up and flown away with it, or the crate has flown away of its own accord, there are innumerable things that you have looked into and heard of and even remotely heard rumour of that could have done it. But without more details, it's hard to push that information down into a more concise answer. Bodhi, you were saying that the Germans don't seem to be working with whatever's in this castle, yes? Yeah, from what I could tell, they were here saying more were coming. Oh, by the way, there are more coming. Uh, oh, so that's good. his problem number one. Uh, and once that happens, they shall be heading into the castle there to take whatever is there. Roughly translated. The the blue glow from the castle is is visible from this distance, right? Very much so. Is it the same tone and hue as the crystal that we got? Very much so, mm -hmm. if not just of a much higher quantity. That's an okay. There is another suggestion. Uh, and he, he kind of... um loosely casts his eyes down to the uh, the satchel that he carries around with him. Is a... Section M does not bring me on these missions for no reason. Uh, if there are obstacles that the Germans uh, could present, this is why you bring me in. I could pass myself off as one of them. Get a closer look. Interesting chat with them. It would mean potentially uh, extricating myself from the rest of you, but needs may. I am German after all. It's not too difficult. It's, I doubt we're going to be sending you in just hanging out to dry all on your lonesome, but if you're able to 
walk up and not get shot in the fucking face. We can round about and cover from the shade. Is there a way, perhaps, to get these three gods and their... You, you said they had a they had a long-haired companion with them, yes? Burlier one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He appears to be leading the group somewhat. Very good. Do you, do you suppose there's a way that we could perhaps send them in ahead of us, maybe handle some of the some of the heavy lifting, if you will, in case there are guns that need to be fired. It would handle two problems at once. Well, I, I was presuming perhaps I could uh, come with orders that uh, the the backup, so to speak, is with myself, and that there's no more coming, and we have been told to proceed forth. Bring them forward, and uh, perhaps eliminate the need to... Uh, have more chess pieces on the board, so to speak. Yes, yes, that that seems rather reasonable to me. Uh, the three of us could take our positions in case things get messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. He um, he kind of. I will. I will look to. Um, yeah, to hell with it. Let's let's spend that fortune, baby. Um, okay. So part of my equipment is a uh, disguise kit, uh, which comes with enough okay. prosthetics, ah. cosmetics, and clothing accessories to alter the appearance enough to pass as someone else, and comes with enough resources to gain three bonus momentum to buy D20s. Um, on top of that, I have a talent known as Chameleon. Uh, Deodric has a talent for assuming the guise of other people, and even the, the identity they present may not be the real them. Um, when they adopt a disguise, they can spend a fortune point to establish that they have an appropriate alias already, complete with the corresponding papers and other trappings, either on their person or in a secure location nearby. And I would uh, potentially argue that it stands to reason that Deirdre would have a a, uh, a Nazi soldier um, uh, guise at his disposal, knowing that this is the exact kind of uh, mission that they are heading towards. I would agree wholeheartedly. If you'd like to attempt to disguise, yeah. more than happy to. Yeah, yeah. Turn around by get changed. No PP. Right. In which case, I'm going to ask you uh, to make me a. We're going to say. Reason stealth check. With difficulty of free, to convincingly disguise yourself. Now remind me. Um, uh, how momentum works again. So, you uh, can spend momentum to buy extra dice with a exchange rate of the first dice costs you one momentum, the second two, and the third three. Yeah. At the moment, you of course have four momentum to spend from the group pool. You can also use your disguise kit to essentially give you three more momentum. Yeah. Um, wow. So you can split between the two pools as you choose. The most dice you can ever buy for a test is five. Hmm. Well, maybe what I'll do then, um, instead of dipping from the group pool, I'll use my equipment. So uh, because I get the three bonus, that would be two more die. Uh, I believe. That works perfectly. Um, so I, I won't uh, dip from the uh, group pool that we have, but I'll use my three mm -hmm. bonus momentum to buy two more D20s to bring my pool up to four. Mm-hmm. Um, and hope that every single one of them succeeds. <laughs> um, You'll be fine, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> what was the attribute um, and skill again? Uh, I'm get, we're going to say reason, uh, reason stealth. Eight, <clears throat> uh, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, still. Yeah. A heavy dice. Holy shit! Oh, I had two successes. Oh, that's brutal. Um, I had a 6, a 4, and a 15, and a 16. So yeah, only two successes on that one. He puts his clothes okay. on backwards. Well, you cobbled the disguise together, and you're fairly confident in it upon kind of initial impressions. You check it over, you have everything you need. Glancing out, however, as you just kind of use your... use the reference point you have of the soldiers on the side, under the light of the full moon, you notice a couple of abnormalities, things you didn't see from hiding behind the van and just overhearing. The uniforms don't quite match. They're close, 
but there are small differences. Namely in their insignia. Emblazoned on the shoulders of each and every one of them on the right hand side, uh, there is a small black and white patch. In the very center of it, you see what appears to be a wolf's paw. A single blue eye sat in the center of it. And whereas you kind of glance up and down your outfit and you know full well it would work on anyone else in the Wehrmacht, it just doesn't match. Uh, um, well, Bodhi, not understanding the significance necessarily of this insignia, um, he kind of looks like this, whoa, it is close. I, I'm i going to wager, though, that uh, these three individuals, they are rather preoccupied at the moment. And he, he especially glances over at the leader who is currently casting his eyes off into the distance, seemingly elsewhere. This is not the eyes and the walk of normal soldiers. So I think they may overlook what I know. It is not perfect, but they are preoccupied. I can do this. Our liaison from a different branch will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. You're certain? This is why they brought you on the mission, no? Best of luck. Sorry. I believe in you. I'm no longer Body Diedrich. I am. Oh no. Wolfgang Auschweden. <laughs> Johann Giegelheimer Schmidt. Wolfgang <laughs> Auschweden. Yeah. Actually, you know what? No, let's let's pay homage um, uh, to my to my grandpa. Um, uh, Hans Fliel. Yeah. Hans Fliel. That is me. Right. I'm transformed. You do not see body Diedrich, and neither do they. All right, here, Freel, go on and do your thing. Um, All three of us get into a position where our guns may be of efficient use. Easily done. you with a deep breath, um, exuding more outward confidence than inward, uh, he'll head forth into potentially the belly of the beast. Okay. You take your first step out and march. Is there any particular method of approach you want to take here? Just walk straight up to them, kind of come up from behind? He's he's going to come up through the, the clear and obvious path uh, that he believes um, the soldiers would be coming by, kind of the direct route, and he's going to attempt mm -hmm. to adopt a, a gate of... Um, kind of a, a regiment and training, but with a, with a, a, a hint of urgency. Um, so it's a slightly, while not sacrificing kind of a um, German national training um, and such, but giving the point of one who is going with purpose um, and is meant to be there above all else. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll, okay. he'll, he'll beeline, um, yeah, towards, towards the grouping of, um, of soldiers. Um, I don't know who he would come across first, but whoever is kind of uh, first in line. Easily done. You march off with purpose. And as you kind of break from the tree line and start making your way towards them, it takes moments for them to hear the footsteps approaching. The verse that you approach is one of the um, common soldiery. A fairly young-faced man um, who twists to meet the sound with a weapon raised in your direction. Immediately shouting out in German, Halt! And he will immediately halt and place his hands up, um, and he'll, he'll be speaking in German now. Um, mm -hmm. Eddie, arms down! Who are you? Hans! Hans Flell! Flell, rather. Sean says that, not, not Bodie. <laughs> Hans okay. Flell! Frank! Who has sent you? 
So, Sean doesn't know how to speak um, a German um, rank and insignia, but I am wanting to wager that Bodhi at least has a passing, or maybe I can roll for it. Um, how 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 much he can pass on the lingo? Well, tell you what, we'll call this a knowledge uh, knowledge uh, a reason tactics <laughs> check with a difficulty of one. All right, yeah, I can do that. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. <laughs> this goes to hell over just him going, who are you? <laughs> what what a plan. Um yeah, that is um that is actually uh because it's meets a beats it, yeah. Yep. Two successes. Wonderful. You generate a momentum immediately off the back of that. Wonderful. And private is private at the end of the day. That's great. Yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, and you know he's you, why not let's go with some classics um, Private Fleer General Schmidt sends me you see this um, look of just momentary confusion and then the eye just kind of darts up to the side as if the man's trying to work out if he should know that name and if he's going to get in trouble for not knowing that name as you continue to shout, you hear the deeper voiced and taller blonde man earlier kick up a fuss as he starts marching towards you, flicking a cigarette and just sending a trail of ash and light through the air as he approaches. Why are you so far out? You've asked for backup. Yeah? I'm yeah. the backup. You? Yeah. One soldier. They want it done quickly. They don't want a mess. I, that is all I was told. We're not looking for wind and fire and a big fuss. We go in, we deal with it, we come out. Those are my orders. He makes his way around the car and just stops, lower, just gesturing for the other to lower his gun and gives you a quick look up and down. You created a total of two successes, I believe, earlier on your stealth check. Yes. to disguise yourself. He is going to attempt his own insight observation check with a difficulty, therefore, of two. Bring it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I can imagine the other three are just, like, watching with, like, eyes wide. Just we, we, have the, we have our guns, like, with our fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. He... Please. Passes his eyes from your head down to your boots and then back up. Where is your weapon? And he, uh, he, he, um, takes a moment and goes, There. Mine was lost in the heat of battle, but I did happen to take a souvenir of my own. And he pulls out the, the Walter here's crude, but the Englishman wasn't needing it anymore. Hmm. Uh, that is true from that, brother. Well done. Hmm. I am perturbed by there's only one of you. It was explained to me that this was to be a simple in, get what we need yes. out. But one soldier, just one. He just starts mumbling under his breath. They're taking the peace. And there are no more coming. It is just you. The French have mounted a, a comeback. While futile, they had to bring their forces back that way. And so I was considered the only man they could spare. They said you would understand. What did they? Oh, yes. Of course they did. Well, we cannot take it like this. Mm. What we... If you do not mind, what is it we are looking to take? They would not tell me. Normally I would not ask, but... Make me a will persuasion check, please. <laughs> Just asking a general. This has no diff... <laughs> Uh, this isn't um, 
a difficulty test, there is an, it is an opposed test. So the officer will make his own check, and whomever is higher wins. And it was a will, what was the other one? Will, pers will persuasion. Will persuasion. Um, can I, uh, well, can I say that this would be using my uh, deceive as well? It 100% does. Great, which will bring my uh, critical up to uh, four. So if I roll between a one and a four, it's going to be my critical success. Um, I'm going to spend a momentum as well. Because now okay. we have we've we've been adding to the pool, so let's do it. Okay, um, will and uh, persuasion. So that's going to be a fifteen. Just got to roll under a fifteen. That is two successes for Bodhi. With two successes, oh, just two. Just two. Yeah, I got... Uh, oh, sorry! Wow! Uh, one of them's a three. That's three successes. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. In which case, you beat them by two and generate two momentum. Woo! They only had one success. Crikey. Let me mess me bridges, Jerry. <laughs> just, like, staring stone-faced at this man, trying just, like, just waiting for the response, doesn't know whether he's going to get a bullet to the head or a straight answer. He chews over his thoughts for a moment as he kind of glances at you and then back up at the uh, castle. The light's still blisteringly bright. Look. There are items in there we have needing to be taken from the English. They seem to have been picked up by another party. Damn crabs. Have you heard of them? Not Zemigo. Hmm. What is that? Oh, I can tell. Ah, it's an abomination. Some mix of crab and hellspawn. I'm telling you, your pea shooter won't be of much help. Oh. And this is definitely not something that Bodhi has ever heard of. Um, Never heard of it? No. At first he thought he was saying amigo, which is <laughs> something entirely <laughs> different. Um, he he, he kind of like chews that word around in his mouth. Amigo. Yeah. Look. Whatever is in there, we cannot deal with. That's just the four of us. You, you, says glancing at you and the others. Hold position. I will take the car and head back. Collect reinforcements. As for you, how can you make me a brawn resilience check, please? Yes, um, this one will be a bit more difficult, but I'm daring to fail, so let's do it. This is difficulty one. So not only did I not succeed at that, uh, one of my die was a 20. Well, in this case, he, as I say, passes a glance up and down at you. Uh, he unhooks his uh, weapon, a MP40, uh, from his firing belt and shoves it into your hand. Defend yourself properly and do not lose it. Are it with my life? And if not, I shall not be around, no? Not for long. There's only one magazine clipped into it, and without pulling it out and checking, you have no idea how much lies within. But with that, he just takes a step away from you and moves towards the vehicle. 
hold your positions, give no ground, and if anything comes out of there, shoot it in the face. Whatever excuse of a face it has. Easy. Do you understand? Understood, General. Sehr gut. We will be back shortly. Don't do anything stupid. And with that, he climbs into the vehicle, turns the engine on, and the moving for a point, say, turns it on. Already idle. Um, puts his foot to the ground and begins to pull off, twisting the car in place and sending a momentary flash of light as he turns the vehicle directly across the tree line where the three of you were sat. Ah. Uh. I get a coordination stealth check of difficulty one from each of you, please. Oh, Hell yeah. Um, could I use camouflage? Yes, you can. I feel like I feel like, I feel like that works. <laughs> I feel like this is the time to be camouflaged. This is, I said a uh, coordination stealth. Coordination stealth. Okay. Right. Here we go. Oh god, do I even have that? <laughs> I don't. Oh, oh, this will oh. be fun. <laughs> Two successes. One Wonderful. success. Sir. Two successes, six and a seven, under eleven. Puts you up to six momentum in total, everyone. You duck in place and dart out of sight as the light passes over you. The car continues to turn and then starts heading off down the road and away, leaving just yourselves and the two remaining soldiers who watch the vehicle go, and the first of them... Oh, thank God. That man is an asshole. What is... What is going on here? I was brought up here to do... What? Pick up something? Has he told you anything? There is a box in there that we need. Apparently it contains some form of... Experimental weapon. Who would be... Experimenting the English? So we are told. Uh, the English are stupid. They do not know what they are messing with. They rarely do. In fairness, at this point, neither do we. Uh, whatever that light is, I do not like it. Do you. Are you interested to know? And he like kind of glances up and allows a little wry smile to flash across his face. Are you interested to know what it is? Am he I... wraps his face into a, a distinct mask of good god no, whereas his friends uh, on the other side of the road rugs and nods ever so slightly. It'd be interesting. Think, think about it, right? We imagine this is a experiment. Could it be a weapon or, or a jewel or some sort of power? Power that, uh, well, the Germans like to, we like to play with them. The finders keepers rule. No, served us well so far. Who's to say it is not ours? Yours, for the taking. There's all this talk of what a mego or a beast. These are fairy tales. These are jokes meant to scare little children and put them into bed before it gets too late at night. For you, for us, there's no story. There's only treasure. What's stopping us? Make me a will persuasion check with a difficulty of three and a complication range of 17. Okay. Um, so, just to clarify that again, uh, will and did you say mm -hmm. persuasion? Will and persuasion. Yeah. Charm will work, deceive may not, as you're trying to get them to take a route of action. Yep, I have charm as well. Um, so, um, at the moment, I have... Uh, what is our momentum pool? A, a mighty six. A 
mighty six. I mean, <laughs> is anyone adverse to me? Uh, ben, please take it. Go You're at the crux of this right now, my guy. Go ahead, take yeah. it. Sorry, I've kind of made myself the face of the party at the moment. No, it's great. Big fan. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to uh, spend three to get two dice again to bring my pool up to four. Um, mm -hmm. And my critical um, threshold is between one and four. And uh, I'm just trying to get three. And my uh, will plus persuasion is 15. I just need to get below 15. Yeah. Remember, anything of a 17 or higher will cause a complication, however. <laughs> okay. Oh, one moment. Um, one, two, three. Five successes. Wonderful. Oh. There's a seven, Damn. a 13, an eight, and a three. In which case, you immediately pull back that momentum, gaining two straight away, yeah. and with no complications. The two soldiers look to you, look to each other, and back at you and back up at the castle. The lights continue to flicker and send long, garish shadows down the hill. The moon, at this point, having raised to the point where it sits just behind it, silhouetting whatever may lie within. Why not? After you. Um, so he's going to take a moment. Let's try one last thing here. Um, I was thinking I could play lookout. I trust you. You're a good man. You'll cut me in on whatever you find. You're honorable. I see a lookout for the general. It'll be some time. I'm not expecting anything, but you can never be too sure. Go in, discover what the bounties lie within. We split it three ways. Knowing full well that if they did find something, they would not split it three ways, but he's trying to play the fool. Um, yep. I keep lookout. Cedric to courtesy. Okay. In which case, I'm going to ask you for another will persuasion. <gasps> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Due to the monumental success you got last time, we're going to lower the difficulty to a total of two. So still will persuasion, but yeah. difficulty two. Eroding um, that momentum. Discipline. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use just one momentum to do the three die. Because um, it's still 15, so I'm pretty confident. I'm confident. Mm -hmm. um, and is that still using charm? That is still using charm. Uh, so that is, and what is your um, threshold for failure? 17 and up? Uh, we're 17 and up still. Okay, um, then I have got um, three successes and no failures. Wonderful. They, again, glance at one another, back at you. Good idea. Holds a fort. Yeah. If anyone asks, we went after a fret, obviously. Hmm. Who's to say other back? Three ways. Three ways. He says, as he just kind of slaps you on the shoulder. See you when we are rich. Hmm. And the two of them turn in place and start jogging up the hill, putting their backs to you and to everyone else hiding within the tree line as they make their way. It's a bit of a walk. So if you want to hold your positions and wait, it'll be about five minutes before they get to the castle itself. At the very least, Bodhi will, while standing where he is, just look over to where he knows the other three are. And there's just this, like, it feels like he'd been holding in a breath for the last ten minutes and just lets it just... His eyes widen, like, and like a <laughs> a little thumb sticks out of the bush at you. Um, and he'll he'll kind of uh, walk further out. If they were to look back, it just he's trying to make it look like he's just heading further to scan out in the distance. But he wants to get himself as close to the vehicles as possible so he can talk to them, uh, the others, while not necessarily looking at them. 
course. You watch as they head their way up. Um, they get to just kind of about, you'd say, 10, 15 feet away from the front uh, gate and prepare to go in. At one point, they stop, glance back down just to see you're still there, and you see a brief wave just to kind of catch your attention. And he, 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 he flashes a smile and waves back and, you know, points up at the, the, the top of the building. Just they give you a small salute and disappear in through the gate. We do not do you... have much time. Sorry, you go, Ben. No, 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 after you, please. I do not know how much time we have, but at least for the moment, the general is going to look for reinforcements. At some point, he is going to be aware that I am not Hans Fleer, and that I am something else. So I bought us a little bit of time and one less person. Uh, these two are off to seek the treasure. If I don't know what the three of you want to do, but if we are to follow behind, we can do so. Otherwise, we may can see what mess, if any, they create. But that means that it's time that we are wasting. As you Perhaps finish your sentence, Sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, 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 I have to, I have to go back. No, the I just, second I you finish your sentence, there. The second you finish your sentence, there is a sudden burst of gunfire that emanates out from the hill. Oh. You hear two short salvos of gunfire followed by screams. Glancing up, you see silhouettes playing against the edges of the blue light that protrudes from the building. Shapes of large things indeterminate in size or shape as they continue to move the screams intensify the shots intensify and become more and more rapid before suddenly with a single pitch owl it goes deathly silent the light well, once again returns that. to a soft glow Is that a werewolf by chance? No, I don't believe that's a werewolf. I, it's better or worse, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Intentionally worse. Did we hear any uh, noises um, other than the gunfire and the screams of the two soldiers? Was there anything that sounded out of place or if indeterminate? What? Any one person can attempt an insight observation check with difficulty of four. Please feel free, someone other than me, to roll. Uh, I'll give it a run. Sure. It is bullshit pool for me, so yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's a 14 pool for me. It's, uh, I mean, it's not a great pool for me, but I might be able to... Inside observation, yeah, no. 11, but, you know, would this yeah. potentially have come up through my arcane knowledge pursuit? Perhaps? Is this a thing? I say no do? for this one, as it's it's just a noise you're trying to listen out for more than anything else. Well, I'll give it a run. I remember, we do have momentum as well. We do. Well, I'm going to need momentum. momentum to make this oh, happen. Yeah. <laughs> I should have prepped more d20s. Somebody stall for time. Who knows any songs? I don't None that are fit for broadcast. There we go. <laughs> uh, how much do we have in momentum? Is it four? Uh, four. Yeah. Four. four. Okay. Uh, I will just spend. I'll spend one for one. No, I'll spend okay. uh, two for two, rather. So you spend. Is it three okay. momentum for two die? It's three momentum in total for two dice, yeah. yes. Okay, great. So I will reroll one of these because I have four on hand right now. That is okay. Not the worst. Oh. That Lovely is the okay. That's three successes. Ah, nice. You do hear something, something distant and inaccurate, lost mostly to the sounds of gunfire and screaming. You think briefly. You hear buzzing. 
not so much uh, an electrical buzz, but the buzz of... It's like as if a bee flew past your ear. Battery. Huh. Well, it does seem particularly otherworldly. Could it not just be a, a bear or a... There are many creatures that uh, find themselves to be more powerful than flesh and bone. Bears don't buzz. Buzzing? Yes. Like a, a like a rather large insect. Yeah. Hate bugs. Well, we may be up against one quite shortly. Spiders do not make those screams that I heard. Maybe one was allergic. Find ourselves in a predicament. We have the unknown to the north. I'm just making up the cardinal directions here. Uh, no, that's, the castle, that's correct. Where the castle is, and we have reinforcement to the south. Who would you rather... Davis? Thing is, we can potentially get in and out, and look, fair is fair, those two were the idiots. We are smarter than that. Hug the shadows. Tread lightly. We find that... You also required a rather uh, heavy weapon, have you not? Hmm. Eyeing the M60. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a gift from the general. A man that I would uh, prefer not to meet again. I may have told some little white lies. Well, everything I said to him was a white lie, but still. Point being, I would well, rather... Well, if we are to run into any sort of uh, unknown knowns in that castle, certainly that that weapon will put a hole or two in them, I reckon. Australian now, that'll be fun. <laughs> love it, <laughs> love it. Yeah. You, um, so you're comfortable with... with the the sub gun, not with the uh, with the wee little pea shooter you had before. I'm just making sure where your line is. Uh, I don't necessarily need to. I mean, are you saying you want the gun? I can give you the gun if you want. Oh, I just want to make sure you know how to use it. You're not going to be waving the barrel in my face. Oh, I didn't say I know how to use it. I can try. Uh, one end goes to the person or the creature. Make sure that hand is not pointing in my direction. Fantastic. Love it. You hold on to it. After all, it's, it's on loan, after all. We do this. We are looking to be quiet. We are looking to become shadows ourselves. Whatever made them scream. Scary thoughts. So like you said, we're smarter. It'll be fine. A bunch of wasps, it'll be fine. Yeah. And there's two more of us than there were of them. No, I don't know that they're wasps. They appear to be rather otherworldly. Um, I have some notes we can check over before we go in, if anybody would like. Yeah. Uh, sh sure, I'll, well, we got the light. Uh, anything in my notes that might aid to this? Nothing of great intent. Okay. That you have rough assumptions and third, if not fourth, hand accounts, but nothing concrete. Does Sean, did you say, did you say me go to us? He hasn't yet. Um, okay. Does what did he say? Me go? Now, Ben, there's got to be something in my notes about some fucking me go. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll call that a, in, uh, we'll say reason, academia check. Oh, uh, yes. For anyone but you, I'd say difficulty three, but considering, we'll say difficulty one. Oh, yeah. nice. Reason, academia. 
Uh, specialty in occultism. That is ah! there. Yeah. Oh God, yes, ah! yes. I, ah! I, a million times, I. <laughs> Great. He's already talking about Argentina. What's this about the amigo? <laughs> when you first, when Ben first said, I was like, did he just did the general just say amigo? And then I was like, oh wait, already... the amigo, right? Gotcha. <laughs> already thinking about uh, this. So Ben, is that an extra thinking... dice for me, or is that just still the two? Uh, so it's still the two. It just means your critical rating is the same as your skill rating. The you love if that. Like I could have said amigo, and you'll have a very different encounter. Uh, so... Oh yeah, no. yeah. behind France, yes. <laughs> Uh, that's two successes. Hey! Wonderful. Hey. Generate some momentum. You flick through your notes, and you do indeed have, again, it it, it is definitely a second-hand account um, of something called a Migo, a mix of what is assumed to be crustacean fungus that's been cobbled together into the rough imitation of an obedient servant. Gigantic, at least in, re in regards to any other crab-like organism, but roughly a head or two above any man you've ever met, with claws strong enough to tear through at least a lightly armored tank and definitively through your rib cage. Fast, tough, but according to your notes, very vulnerable to the arcane. Well, well. Uh, I will. I'll share all that information. You guys, you guys heard all that, but for me instead of Ben. Crustacean <laughs> and fungus. Let's thanks missing rice to be a New Orleans dish. I don't like seafood. So perhaps we could say bake crab, crab a lot. Okay. Yeah, I kept referring to the the beast or whatever is in there. It's damned crab. I have a thought. Perhaps we could One. lure it out of the out of the castle. Uh, Shark, you still have that bomb you disarmed, yes? Wonderful. I right here. Perhaps we could lure it outside. With the intent to have it trigger the bomb. Oh, that would draw a lot of attention, though, wouldn't it? There's already the rattle title of the gunfire. I think a dragon attention is a bit of a foregone conclusion. That is a fair point. Well, I will be ready with some some spell work, and somebody else can talk for a while whilst I read my... Oh. Before you start delving into your books, uh, that... That, that glowy shite you found, or we found, um, you, you reckon it's arcane perchance? Oh, most certainly. Get so, it? Yeah, I was gonna say, because it's in my bag, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of my bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. And, like, anything Does this draw it out? <laughs> <laughs> Leo doesn't know. Yeah. You take the box out. Do you open it? Leo? Oh. I'll, I'll look to the rest of the group. I can, I can put it in this. If it blows up, but the explosion will be like magical shrapnel. That's a great idea. No, that's, no, that's, a, that's, a, brilliant, that's a brilliant idea. You're thinking of using the crystal like the cheese and the bomb as the mousetrap. As the bomb, yeah. yes. Like uh, yeah yeah yeah, I can easily do a pressure plate. I just stick the crystal in there. I got gums and wires and other doodads, and just pressure plate it down. Kaboom! It's a dirty bomb for a very dirty crustacean. Now you, you said that, that seems rather genius. You said what? Did you say gum? And so, this doesn't sound so technical. You sure this will work? We are dealing with explosives, yeah. Let me dust tractor together with with. This same shite, copper wire and prayers to Jesus, we're fine. I mean, I'm willing to give it a go. It might make it easier to crack its shell, so to speak. Because it's a crab, you see. Ha! Huh. I, yes, um... I'm gonna walk away now. Do... Right, one of us, if we do happen to... This is presuming, of course, that the do lure the beast up into the open. 
does then at least one of us enters the premises. The violet is distracted, if not, God willing, destroyed. It has associated German with food. So I am the bait? Claps you on the shoulder. Oh boy, Jerry. I I think that perhaps what uh, what we ought to do is try and lure it into this courtyard. Hopefully, the explosion is enough to at least knock a chunk off of it. We can then take our guns and continue to knock chunks off of it. And once it lies in ruin, then we can go within the ruins. As you discuss this. Um, it's impossible to not notice the light change. Oh boy. The emanations coming from the castle itself seem to begin to strobe. What has up until this point been fairly dim, uh, bright if not steady, begins to intensify and dim, and intensify and dim. There's a flash and an arc of lightning that reaches up from the interior of the castle into the sky briefly before shattering and di uh, dying in the wind. And then another and another. They seem to be intensifying and the strobing slowly begins to grow faster. Is the crystal doing it as well? Have you Still opened it yet? Shut. Uh, could you? I Perhaps. want me to... Yeah, that might be a time maybe of the essence. Okay, everybody, stand back again. I'll take one for the team. Crack it open. Explosion. You open it up, and almost immediately the light that was inside previously, again, fairly dim, blazes forth. A single sharp snap of electricity charges out from it and just reaches in the direction of which you've opened it, which I'll assume you opened away from your party. Yes. Appreciate it. Immediately it darts off towards the castle, reaching out as if an arm stretching forth before dissipating again. The light inside then strobes. Once, twice, and begins to match the strobing of whatever is coming from the castle. Oh. Just out of curiosity, Julia's gonna take like a, a random like bolt, lug nut, etc., and just lob it. Like if the if the beam is like a like a constant like ghost like Ghostbuster mm -hmm. style, just try and lob it through the beam. Chucking a rock through the crate. Yeah, right. If it, yeah, if yeah. it melts, we don't need the bomb. Yeah. We got a lightning thrower in a box. <laughs> it's it's an indeterminate burst. It's not really a length, mm -hmm. uh, Christian. A continuous lance. It's a quick. <laughs> It's difficult to catch. Yeah, you throw a couple of lug nuts, and it just flies through the air, missing one arc, missing another. Another catches it, and it definitively heats up and hits the ground, but it doesn't explode or be cut in half. It's the same as if you were to drop anything into a heavy electrical current. All right, it's this might be a a weapon on its own. I one, I don't want to. Either frazzle the bomb or frazzle me when I'm trying to put this shit together. Um, just close it up and we can. When whatever scary bee, crab, mushroom, you just. It's, it's like a flamethrower. Just point, zap. The light is intensifying more. The strobing mm -hmm. is increasing in speed. How do we. How do we draw Am I it out? able to close it? It closes quite happily. Um, okay. The moment the lead lining closes over the top of it, it just bites off the electricity and reseals quite happily. Are the uh, doors still open from when yeah. the soldiers went in? They are indeed. And as you kind of glance up to check the doors, you see a shadow Gah. of something moving. Maybe it's time to set that bomb. <laughs> you said, yeah. Okay. Is it do? I mean, I'm... but he's gonna roughly, like, roughly have the rifle pointed. So is this the plan? Is we what we withdraws the thing out? Like he still thinks it's just a bear or a creature of some ilk. 
Um, like he's he's not willing to be like, yes, Eldritch Horror. Um, but clearly, Shiza is about to go off. So he's kind of now a little bit out of his element. This is not in his, like combat is not his wheelhouse. So he's kind of deferring to the rest of you in, in like, what are we doing? Like big straw, big shadow. We're going with the hey, a positive plot twist. Thank you. Oh, no, that's just the I have none of it. Oh boy. Mine. Um, so, no, so here's what we're going to do. The guns we have are meant for people, not fucking bears. It was just a fucking bear. This kill a bear. I don't know if it's something of a super bear, but it's gotta be more useful than a bunch of the shit we've got. So step in the right fucking direction. I'm just gonna because Julia's short, very short, very Irish, very angry, tiny and fierce. Like, you motherfucker! Um, and it's gonna go and get ready to deploy the bomb. Fair enough. You dart forward with uh, package in hand and begin to prepare. Um, as you do, your eye, again, still drawn up towards the shadow, uh, which rapidly becomes a silhouette moving uh. out of the doorway. You see a rough shape of a large six-legged Thing skittering through the doorway. It doesn't walk, it climbs across the wall and just lands onto the floor. Oh, gross. Yeah, come here, you crawdad piece of shit. Its exact features are impossible to determine, the light behind it just obscuring any forward imagery it may have. Its finer details lost to shadow. Your eyes fall on that as it begins to incline itself, orient down the hill, making short, rapid, jumpy movements. As you see another silhouette, not breaking from the door, but rather climbing over the wall, followed by a second. I didn't even consider there was more than one. And as whatever they are, begin to pull themselves over the walls, down, and lift themselves up as you see shimmering yet translucent wings snap from their back. Caught only in the flickering light as the things begin to lift themselves up from the ground and buzz away towards you. Which is where we will have that scene end. <laughs> and take ourselves on a break. A short oh. 10 minute gap as we refuel and rearm. <laughs> Where are uh, you? Oh my goodness. Uh, I... in, in addition, as uh, people form rapid plans in their head, one hopes. Um, it's also a really good time for us to announce that we actually have a bit of a giveaway uh, this evening. If you take a look in the chat, you'll be able to see one of the lovely team uh, going through all the details um, and explaining kind of what, how to how to enter, what you may win. The short and easy answer is Modifius, our sponsors, uh, are offering out tonight a single copy of the brand new Misson dossier book as well as a opportunity to also win the full PDF mission set uh, from Drive Through RPG and two copies of Operation Snowstorm, uh, the adventure that I wrote and will torment people with until the day I die. But if you're looking for a way to enter, check out the chat and they'll lead you for everything. But for at least the next 10 minutes, we're going to disappear and take a short break. And we'll see you shortly thereafter Hello. to see what happens next. Go oh, nowhere. Oh, you know, it's... Oh. <laughs> I... Oof. This, is, this is gonna go... Yeah. You see, we're at the... We shall return shortly, says uh, the post Oh, uh, great. I, I remembered... It's, it's only... At the very end there where I realized two things. Number one, which is, oh, there could be more than one. And mm-hmm. number two, we've set a ground trap and they fly. We know they fly. They fly now? <laughs> they fly now. Oh, so, yeah. No, but it's, it's, it's got a pressure plate, so I just got to frisbee it really good. 
or we place the the crystal, the gem, the crystal thing onto it. Like if I'll I just open that, it, I'll be like, hi. It's like have it. Yeah. Um, be marvelous. Oh, oh man, I I've I've been loving everyone's character shit so far. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I went in because I like haven't had a, like a lot of time to get into the headspace, but I mean like that initial scene, like, oh yeah, no, she's gonna be like a very short, angry Irish lady. 100 percent I'm 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 loving the mix of characters. Like from the serious to the silly, I dig it. It's all what it needs to be. I'm just gonna dart off and grab a drink, I'll be right yeah, back. That's so you. good. Refuel, recharge. Oh, I shall stick uh, here. Yes, Adolis. The mics are hot, so we can chat with you guys during break. Oh, those, yeah. those, those, you know, those of us that are still here. Yeah, I shall put in the... Uh, where's the chat? There we are. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting because I'm also... I am... Oh, I think it, is it just me here? No. Um, grab me one, two, gracious so far. What did I miss? Um, make Modiphius make all the d20s in the sets big, nice, and feel like the Fallout ones. Actually, it's very interesting. I haven't played... This is actually my first uh, 2d20 system. So I'm the only one here. At the moment, I believe. Um, so, thank you all to everyone who is um, jumping along and um, and coming onto this here um, stream. Um, those of you who are on the Cyber Nation Uncensored channel um, know that obviously this is not the only show that is on the platform. Once we wrap up here with Akhtung Cthulhu, um, I do believe we are heading onto uh, the, a cyberpunk red um campaign done by um, gm rob mulligan um the uh the gentleman who who is the uh the founder and runner of cyber nation uncensored and this is a uh an amazing crew that have been doing i believe 10 seasons now of a cyberpunk red campaign um one of the players is ellen who literally is upstairs uh right now we we live together we work together as part of roll to cast and they're also just an amazing bunch of characters. Also, Cyberpunk Red happens to be one of my favorite TTRPGs. Um, beautiful world, awesome system, absolutely manic and wild. So basically what I am saying is, um, you know, if you've still got more more to do in your, if you want more to do in your evening or your morning, please feel free to stick around for some Cyberpunk Red after we finish here with Akhtung Thulu. I can all oh, good. Um, also, just as a, um, I'll, I'll chat about it when when he comes back. But um, uh, one thing I did, so Cyberpunk Red is great, and I've been really enjoying this as well. Yeah, I was just gonna say that this is actually my first foray into a Modiphius, um game. So this is my first um, foray into a two D two D twenty system. Um, because I haven't played Dune, haven't played Fallout. Um, g'day, Dash Nash, uh, the TRG. We're currently just on break at the moment, um, for a brief little 10 minutes before we crack back into, um, our this here Ash Tom Cthulhu game. Who else do we have in the chat? If, if, if people aren't in chat, sound off. Uh, oh. 2D20 is a great system. I actually love it. Um, I I really dig most Cthulhu systems in general. So my favorite game is actually um, Pulp Cthulhu, which um, runs under the D100 system. So it's obviously about rolling. Rolling lower is better, right? Um, so I really dig systems where you're looking to roll under a skill. Um, be sure to check out Modifius Entertainment for various TTRPGs like Axel Cthulhu, Fallout, Dune, and more. Um, how are you liking Ultimatum as an intro to the system? You know what? Uh, like, again, as someone who this is my first kind of look into a 2D20 system, I <laughs> felt that I'm biased or anything. Um, now, as I said, I, I dig this system. Like, I love kind of the fluctuation, especially, especially the currency that is meant to be spent and spent and spent, like momentum and threat. Like, the idea is you should be able to get it easily, spend it easily, because you're going to get it easily again. So it kind of behooves you to continuously use it up, right? Especially because you're in a group pool system. Oh, yes. And it's, yeah, uh, God, yeah. momentum, momentum, especially, and, and threat as well. It's, it's a smooth, it's, when I started playing it, it just reminded me, it's a more 
intuitive version of the Destiny pool from the FFG Star Wars game. Which like, ah, uh. which like I like I've I've been running for years. I like as a GM, I still have no fucking idea how it works. Yeah. But I was like, I know how Star Wars stories work, and I'll just they won't know the difference. <laughs> no, but it's the yeah the whole thing of you know it's the some people think it like, invites like you know like antagonistic GMing, but no, it's just like it feeds the narrative, especially for like big pulpy things like this. Oh. Like, it's perfect for like for like, for, the, for Octoon and for Conan. And it's also for for me as well. Like I'm a I'm a big uh, advocate for um, failure in play, not as a negative thing, right? But like th through the narrative excitement that comes from like, because like obviously there are a myriad of different ways you can play TTRPGs. Um, a lot of people really uh, crave delving into system for optimization and for finding like you know the best possible way to optimize your character to be big damn heroes for me i really adore um systems and opportunities to find what are the flaws in your character um what are ways that they can potentially fail because then that's only gonna like you can fail forward you can you can push the narrative forward like it doesn't have to mean a negative thing it's just failing is fun intrigue. yeah yeah failing was, is fun well, fail forward. That, that is that is one aspect in what is it um uh, it was the the apocalypse world system that, that I really enjoyed. It was like the way you gain experience is only when you when you fail a check because you you learn from failure. Like that's 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 a that's a cool thing. But um, yeah, I, I also like I think it's um, I know it's I read it in the the Conan book. I th I'm presuming it's in this uh, in this as well where you can uh, like succeed at a cost or or you can actually like opt to fail, which is like, yes. which is a, a neat thing. So I I love doing that. It's like no, that makes absolutely no sense that Julia would like crack like an Atlantean code. Like no. Um. Also. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Uh, you go. No. No. Go ahead. Um. I was just gonna say. Um. It would behoove me. Um. Not to. Not to mention like, a completely different tangent. That uh, the Dragon Prince is one of my uh, favorite shows, and to oh. find out. That you um, voice Soren has yeah. I was like oh, uh, be still my beating heart. Um, I well, adore thank you so that. Much. I Kimbo. appreciate that. Um, yeah, he's he's my boy. Yeah, Except I'm Charlie. Because yeah, I I, I I I was like oh, you're a voice actor, dope. So am I. What 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 credits um, have you done? They went oh my god, Dragon Prince. So this that was my good moment. I just. It, it would behoove me if I didn't say um, you do fantastic work, and I, I, thank I you. think you've got thank such you an incredible much. voice, um, and you did a lot of great service for the show. Thank you, thank you. Did you see the uh, Did you see the teaser that dropped today? No. See, the problem is, is that I am actually a season behind. I um, uh, am. I have not watched season three yet, um, and I've mm. been letting it bank a while, so I don't power through it very quickly. I tend to do that with That's shows. Fair. Yeah, me too. Me too. I did that with, uh, I did that with Better Call Saul, and now I need to like go back and rewatch a lot of it. Not yeah. just because I miss stuff, but because I feel like Vince Gilligan's so so good at what he does. Like, yeah, I want to appreciate it. But no, right. like um, we our new season drops in November, I think. So ah. we got time. Good. I got all the time in the world. Um, I mean, it, yeah, I remember, you know back when um, uh, House of Cards was a thing. Um, mm. I remember I watched it, I watched the first season twice, stopped watching, it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna take a break and then would realize, oh, I've forgotten everything. Um, yeah. So I have to go Absolutely. back and start again, because it's, it's that time commitment, right? Especially for something like Better yeah. Call Saul, where if you if you don't, it's like, oh no, I need to, I need to start again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing I'd say, have you picked up the graphic novels at all? Nine. I have not. There are three. There are two Dragon Prince graphic novels right now. Ah. Oh. Uh, one which takes place between season three and season four. That's quite good. And one that focuses on Baby Rayla and her parents. That's. Oh. I I haven't read it yet, but I hear it's quite good. Um, if, it's, if it's anything like the the last year Bender, like like comic compendiums, it's going it's going to reach in the reach in your rib cage and hurt you somehow. Yeah, the, that yeah, through the moon hurts in a good way. But uh, yeah, what what the what the guys are doing is they're taking kind of a multimedia approach to it. So there's stuff in like the Tales of Zadia core book 
that will reflect into the show. And there's hmm. stuff in the graphic novels that affects the show. You don't need to have read them to get it, but it gives you that extra like world building and lore, which is kind of neat. So cool. That's right. I love that. It's it was kind of my approach to Mass Effect, which is my favorite yeah. uh, franchise, probably my favorite franchise of all time. And just going, oh, there are graphic novels, there are there are books. Give me all of it now. Yeah. Um, I need to send you a paper that I wrote because I wrote a paper about Mass Effect, Star Trek, and the United Nations. Ooh, Ooh. interesting. That military sci-fi goodness. What an yeah. interesting focus. It was for an international relations class. Ah. Yeah. That's it was science fiction and international relations. So I got to read science fiction for a class. You um, got I mean, who can ask for more, right? Eh? You made you it so. I was like, yeah, when like uh when I went to when I was in college for, for game design, one of like the, the classes that was technically like an English course was the history of film. And they just yeah, are gonna sit you down for your morning block, and you're going to watch, you know, movies. Um, some of them were artsy and very weird. Some of them were like the good weird, like The Fall with Lee Pace, which I had never heard of. But then I watched it, like this is a fucking aesthetic. And I, yeah. <laughs> but now you, but now you can't, you can't find that movie for less than like five hundred bucks anywhere. It's so dumb. It's it's been it's like I like. It's just so hard to find now for some fucking reason, but... 500 bucks. Because you liked it. That was it. Oh. They, they saw that yeah. you enjoyed it and went, right, rip it away. You know, it's gone no, forever. No, you specifically. <laughs> yeah. No screaming, no, no nothing. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was just one of those things where like, oh, I, I, I want to watch this. The only one you can, I, I could find. It was like, oh yeah, it's for Blu-ray, but it's for like, you know, like like the da like Danish for, like format Blu-ray. But like, oh, I... Come on, man. <laughs> Um, I will. I will say at some point you're going to see me um, race away briefly when we are playing because uh, I am doing the lazy thing because we are out of copy. Um, so I'm ordering one. Um, so if you see Bodhi uh, race off, he needs his caffeine before he gets eviscerated by Amigo. That's I fair. mean, my intent will be fair. to have the evisceration happen as you leave. So oh, don't worry, you'll, you'll come back for the <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like, Half of you will go forward, the rest will stay behind. Yeah. It is Follow a, the game like lead. a game like this is so fascinating as well because any any story that is, you know, tension filled and dread filled in a way that Cthulhu stories are, you're like I know that like, you know, from a narrative point you go, Oh, like I know eventually we're gonna have to go forward and we're gonna have to like, you know, confront the thing, but also your characters and you are intelligent, you go but also every sign is pointing us to be cautious at every turn. Um, so it's that lovely balance as well. We still have a lot of fortune bank. We might make it through this alive. We may. Maybe. Now awesome. that you said that though. Yeah. Well, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, dream. there's only one way to tell. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> By uh, you telling us that we all survived. Uh, or we all died. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, shall we? If everyone's ready. Yeah. Yeah? Let's, Let's just it. see how well you do. <laughs> Spend all that fortune calling an allied airstrike. Yo, bastards are going down with me! <laughs> how much momentum do we have heading into this? Uh, heading into this, you were on two, you dropped down to one. Uh, two? Yeah, yeah, because we, we were really... We too were, many people. We were spending. That was good. Cool. Um, and I've used one fortune. I need to remember that. In fact, let's mark it on my character sheet because I downloaded the uh, free um, 2D20 character sheet. Ooh, smart. We oh, are that's a good thing. back. Hello again, everyone. Is that right? We are back, one would hope. Um, I'll wave and pretend that I can see chat waving back, as as is only the intent. Right. Let's see how many people I can kill in as short a period of time as physically possible. Well, <clears throat> as we last left it, <laughs> as we last left it, your the four of you are stood just on the base of the hill, looking up at the castle. The bright blue light 
uh, electricity arcing from behind its walls into the night sky, the full moon still hovering overhead. As you watch, you see three large crustacean-like things pull themselves from the door and from the walls, taking to the air, their wings catching the light with every rapid movement, buzzing through the air in a manner that runs through your form, causing your, che uh, your teeth to shiver, your bones to ache. For the moment, they are still obscured by the silhouettes of the light. They are maybe 10 seconds away. You each have a single action before they draw in. Spend it wisely. Um, so Bodhi, I think, as stressed, not mechanically, just flavorly, as stressed as uh, Bodhi is, I think he has enough time to uh, pull his gun into a very sloppy position to aim at the nearest creature and he'll um, uh, yell out, um, the, the crystal, the gem, place it, the cheese in the trap. Yeah, I was oh going to say, I'm going to open open it and put it on, or I'm just going to give it to Julia and be like, here. I hate this. It's in your hands now. Slap down the mine. Like, hey, come on, you, you fucking bastard. He's scuttling back. Try, definitely not pissing herself. I'm going to spend two fret as you slap the mine down. You glance down at it and remember at that point you haven't actually reset it yet. Shit. What? Hi! Huh. Fuck. <laughs> and it's just... Uh, clutching the crystal, I'm just like... I'm dead! <laughs> You can fling yourself down to try and repair it rapidly if you'd like. Yes! But it's going to be a difficult check. Uh-huh. A very uh -huh. difficult check for speed oh. and time. Two things you don't have right now. Mm -hmm. You have to make a coordination uh, engineering check, focus on explosives, with a difficulty of four. Four, okay. I'm going to a spend one of... A complication range of 18. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend one of my fortune for... Uh, for a, a crit, success? right? Yeah. For success. Yep. So you spend. First, a, yep. And then I can so still you roll set one of your dice to a one, basically. One of them to a one. Okay. Right. Yep. That's an immediate you two still success. roll the other dice. Okay. So right. you just need two successes um, here. All right. And uh, do you want to use the momentum? No if there's Double no objections, momentum. I'm gonna take that momentum. Uh huh. Do it. Do it. One remaining. Okay. Okay. Um. That is three, six, three successes. All of them are below, let's see, because uh, coordination is 11, engineering is three. So a total of 14 is in the, a 12, 11, and a five. Um, sadly, just missing my, my focus. But there's still you copy three more successes. Yeah. It's three successes, but unfortunately not enough. You fling the explosive down and start just trying to rapidly put everything into place you know full well if you had another five seconds you could finish it five seconds you don't have however and the, the rings are currently turn. at yep. with the with the Migo um, would you say that is a, a a range that is close enough for me to bind them with perhaps a spell Hmm. Mm -mm. Perhaps hmm. to buy five seconds that could be useful? I would say for that specific spell, they need to be in close range. So basically okay. on top of you. Okay. Heck. You uh, can, however, if you listen, want, usually. hold your action and wait until they are 
right on top of you and then cast the spell before anything they may do. Ooh. I... Oh, I didn't know we could hold actions. How fun. Um... Yeah. I just... I, w- I want to see if there's something I can do to help in this moment to get... The uh, bomb ready. To get the bomb mm-hmm. ready, yeah. I mean, I'll just be firing at them um, with the rifle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that'll probably give you one second before they <laughs> kill me. <laughs> um, you know what? Sure, sure. I'll do that. I'll get out into a slightly more open area, <clears throat> and I will ready Binding of Yogg-Sothoth. Why hey, not? wonderful. Well... In which case, you'll cast it as they arrive on the location. So as they reach you, you will let the spell loose. Uh, loose. Um, yeah. Bodhi, you were saying about taking a shot. Did you want to fire on them now, or wait? I, I think he will, because I think, again, he is not trained. Um, he is not a military man. He is wielding a gun that he has never used. He is unaware of how many bullets he has, and he didn't realize that, A, these things were real, and B, there were more than one of them. And see, they fly! So, uh, yes, he will absolutely fly now. let loose with a, a flurry of what he can only hope are uh, deadly, deadly bullets. And as a side note, if you can hear it, I uh, apologize as the garbage truck is right outside the store. Um, the don't bomb. worry about it. Exactly. Right, well, in that case... They are at quite a long range at the moment. Mm-hmm. Which is going to make the shot difficult. But, you know, no more difficult than I imagine you expected it to. Yeah, maybe I'll draw their attention as well, which is also uh, maybe helpful. One can only hope. In which case, I'm going to ask you to make a coordination fighting check okay. with a difficulty of three. Right, so the, uh, the fun thing about this is Bodhi has... A nothing in fighting. Um, so I'm looking at just a straight coordination roll of eight. Yep. Um, so why not? Let's just let's just dare to fail. Let's just do a simple two d twenty roll. And uh, what's the difficulty? Sorry. Three. Oh, sorry. So oh. to give you a, yeah, to give you a quick rundown, um, essentially you have uh, rough zones to determine your range here. Yeah. Uh, the MP, uh, the gun you have has a range of close, yeah. so anything outside of that range is going to be at a higher difficulty. Uh, in this determination, it'll be a difficulty of three. Okay, which means I can't succeed in that um, regardless, so... Oh, you never know. Two crits can happen. That is Even true. Even one crit in a pass. That is true, actually. So you know what? Let's just let's just go for gold. Um, Dare to uh, try. Watch Bodhi Diedrich get two ones. You, you didn't, motherfucker. Show Four us, show us, show us. and a one. Oh, hey, that's fucking done it, mate. I just want you. Sh- oh man! Hell yeah! You I can fucking loose catch ya. <laughs> a stream of shots into the sky. Just watch as they pepper the area. Um, and for a moment, you take the first few as nothing. Clearly, more than tracer shots and groupings. As the last few arc directly into the faceplate of the thing descending towards you. Oh! <laughs> Please roll some damage for me. So the gun you have has a damage total of four stress dice. Okay. So, um, because I am I am somewhat unfamiliar uh, with how yep. combat works, so I'm grabbing forty sixes. Forty six. So in in lieu of the challenge dice that we use in Act on Cthulhu, um, you can always use a d six. Yep. Um, how they'll work is for every dice you roll you're inflicting an amount of damage cool as i mentioned to all of you earlier roll of a one deals one damage roll of two deals two damage three to four nothing five to six you roll one damage and a special effect what well, the special effect of this gun however 
We will find out if you use it. Okay. So um, I rolled a three, a three, a four, but then I rolled a six. Okay. So in total, you deal one point of damage. Mm -hmm. That's seems right for Bodhi. Which, unfortunately, despite the accuracy of your shot, hits smack into the faceplate of the thing and just tink chinks off in a s flurry of sparks that just fly from its face. Worryingly, more than anything, as you have tracked your shots into it, watched with intricate awareness, you realize you're looking straight into it at its friends and at everything else that surrounds it and you take the weight of the situation and the nature of the thing and it chills you to your very core it's no longer hidden behind the darkness and the shadows illuminated in the moonlight you see the thing for what it is a conglomerate mass of chitin hatred and flying death. I need you to make a will resilience check of two, please. Okay. Uh, will resilience for me is going to be uh, 11. Um, um, that is one success. You're... <sighs> The moment you spend looking at the thing and knowing its every intent is to come down and rend you limb from bloody limb sets in your mind for a moment too long. And you suffer four mental stress. Ooh, so I have a, uh, a, um, what's the word here? I have a, um, courage of two which means I would then mm -hmm. take two stress, I believe. Correct. Um, and I think that that manifests uh, for Bodhi. He, he aims wildly, he fires off a shot, he feels the pullback of the rifle. More importantly, he sees why all these shots are going wildly. Um, one, he believes, cracks straight into what he presumes to be the face of this aberration and you initially hear him there's that elation of i hit it and then no sooner has those words escaped from his mouth that he realizes i hit it and then he focuses on the it and what it is as he sees he feels this thing direct everything towards him and he drops the gun and he freezes and he just watches it and everything else fades out as he just now feels drawn to it. As they are drawn to you, the things descend from the skies, dropping towards you and arcing through the air one of them immediately breaking away and s moving with the swiftness of hell towards Bodhi. The other two separate, twisting away from it and grouping together to descend directly towards Julia. The box still clasped next to you as they fly over the explosives, pincers extending from their chitinous forms as they reach out towards you. I need everyone, apart from Bodhi, to now make a will resilience check of two. Oh shit, I've got no goddamn courage. Over two seconds. Thank you. Let's see, Bill. Uh, okay, that's not terrible. Not the worst. Oh, but that roll is. Okay. Yep, three successes. You're absolutely fine, and you generate a point of momentum. Oh, do we roll the amount of dice we have in our courage? Hold on, I'm... No, no, that's um, essentially how much resistance you have. So, you reduce the amount of damage you would take by your courage. 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, that is one success. Okay, and I believe it was just the one for Julia as well. Yep. Or... Nothing. Yeah. Okay. In which case, both Julia and Anna Frita suffer four points face. of mental stress. Oh. oh. Uh, with free piercing which means it ignores three points of courage even if you have it okay. now it's selling <laughs> so that is hold on so i have courage five so that means i take two i'm missing correct okay great, oh, Love correct. so it ignores three points of it which still you leaves you with the two beautiful yeah courage five makes sense you'll be like the most prepared for something like this as well as prepared as you can be. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Julia, as they descend towards you, you get this horrendous, overwhelming feeling of worthlessness, as if you know you are nothing more than an obstacle between what these things are and what they want. The box clasped in your hands, and you are simply an ant carrying it. Anna Perita, on the other hand, You've seen these things, you've read about them, you know roughly what they are, and even though the separation from research to reality is jarring, you also know they've just walked straight into your trap. You may cast your spell. Hell yeah. Remind me how to do that, please. <laughs> right then. You succeed! Cast spell! You kill them all! Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> Okay, so it's so, I have skills persuasion, so it'd be persuasion by uh something. Reason persuasion. Reason? Difficulty reason yeah. persuasion. So all of your spells are always cast by reason as you essentially Perfect. research Thank them. You. Um Yeah. Alright. So difficulty uh, two. Yeah. And what do we have in the momentum pool? Anything? You have no, yeah, two we... remaining. Oh, anyone mind? The two remaining. Please, by all means. I'm not oh, living yeah, past yeah. another five minutes, so go for it. <laughs> Very well. Uh, that is. Da, 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 da. That's two successes. A. Wonderful. That's what I needed. You fling your spell out, and immediately you see this rippling effect pass from your fingers as if the world distorts at the merest thought of, your, of uh, the energy that passes from you. Can you roll me four damage dice, please, as you inflict four mental stress to every enemy nearby? Love that. Uh, I'm going to roll. I have a set of two here, so I'm going to roll it twice. Perfect. Uh, okay. That's a two and a six. And a... That one is cocked. A at two fours. Okay, so three damage in total. And brilliant. Okay, so the spell itself, essentially what that does, uh, just to run through, is normally if the spell would deal any injuries to the creatures, they would be pinned in place. Unfortunately, it didn't deal enough damage to injure any of them. It has hurt them all, but not injured them. So they have received stress damage. Okay. The things in the air slow slightly, as if pushed back by your spell. They literally just pull away briefly. Their onslaught halted, if only for a second. They reorient themselves quickly. No noise passes from them apart from the fluttering of their wings or the rapid buzzing of their wings and the, s the sickening crunch emanating from their claws as the pincers just extend and push against the chitin. One of them, the head plate, which was pushed towards Brody, or Bodie, sorry, puts it in place over towards Julia as all three of them rest their general visage towards her and the box in her possession. One of you gets to now take an action. And then one of them will. And to and fro. 
pick wisely. Anyone have any burning desires to go first? I take an action to cry and piss myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's have a. I'm just kind of. You know what? Um, oh, I don't know whether this will work. Um, I might try and see. Um, yeah, you know what? This makes sense. I'm gonna try and use my um, cool under pressure talent again because I still we have three fortune in total that we can use per person. Is that right? We start off with three. Is that yep. correct? Right. Um, so again, this is when the situation gets tough, and <laughs> I think this is a situation getting tough. Um, Deirdre takes a deep breath and gets the job done. Um, when they attempt a stealth skill check, they must spend a fortune point to automatically succeed at that skill to generate no momentum. Um, Deirdre is going to look to literally hide. Um, he is, he's gonna attempt to, I, I feel like he snaps himself out of his stupor, um, and is going to either drop down into what he hopes is some large, uh, ferns or cover himself by a tree. And he just wants to get himself as far removed from this creature that has beelined itself to him and that he feels linked to in a, in a strange, weird way. Like his now number one priority is just to get some distance from it. Easily done. So you spend the fortune point to succeed, I believe. Yes. Correct me if I'm yes, wrong there. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. You just turn in place as the thing turns its attention from you over to Julia and bolt, flinging yourself back down the hill you clambered up just to reach uh, the vehicle earlier, rolling down and disappearing into the woods. You take position behind a tree and just vanish from sight, not just from the creatures, but from all of your allies as well. Yeah, and leaving that uh, machine gun, uh, that rifle, sorry, mm -hmm. um, in its place. He didn't take it with him. Um, this is, this is self-preservation uh, at its most cowardly, and I would ask you most reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. It would, in that case, with your action done as you dart down between uh, behind the trees, one of the lead creatures, the one that had been buffeted back by your spell the most, reasserts itself and darts forwards. Single pincer lancing out down towards Julia. Unfortunately, I've just been informed that one of the wonderful viewers has decided that someone really, really needs a critical injury. <laughs> so I'm not going to roll for this attack. I'm merely going to deal damage as the pincher lances out past your arms as you're just holding the box and slams into your throat, lifting you from the air and beginning to just clamp. You take five damage. That is a total... Uh, Minus any four. armor you may have. It's two. In which case it drops down to free, but you are pinned in place. It's, it's a flak vest, so it, if it's directed at my throat, would I be able to soak? Yeah. It? This depends on how cruel I want to be, really, doesn't it? I'll allow you to spend a momentum to say that the flak vest brings is just raised up slightly, just enough. My bomber collar saves my life. Yeah, oh, sure, I'll spend that momentum. To die Absolutely. slower. <sighs> the pincer lifts you from the air and just holds you there. Immediately, what worries you more than anything else is the creature then doesn't stop moving. It continues to fly up. The box still clasped in your hands. It pulls up and starts pulling back away from the others. Straight up or towards the castle? Straight up and back towards the castle. Mm. You feel the pincer is just closing deeper and deeper, trying to just throttle the life out of you. Thankfully, it seems that your flak vest has gone stuck just in the right place to give you at least a few more moments of life. As we come to the next player. Whomever would like to go next, fire away.
How far up is this creature? It's moved into medium to distance. It. So it's moved to about medium distance from you. Um, which is about 15, 20 feet up in the air with a good 15 foot drop. Five foot fall? I can take that fall. <laughs> okay. Um... doesn't happen to be anything Leo could climb, is there? There are trees directly behind you. Thank you. It's just having I think an I have existential something. crisis. Yeah, you go. Okay. Go for it. Um... <clears throat> How much how much momentum do we have? I know I keep asking that. I'm not paying attention. Is it you have two? One left. One. One. I can work with that. Uh, okay. So there's three of them. And they're all in three close to medium distance, you said? So two are within close distance, the one um, and one is pulling away into medium oh. distance. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> um so I'm I'm confused with regards to spheres of Yogsathoth, because I think I want to pull that because yep. there's three of them and I got three balls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, would that be an additional <laughs> roll for each for each sphere, or because it says difficulty nope, varies you, you below? You cast the spell uh, the spell once. If you're wanting yeah. to make free spheres, you make it difficulty free, basically. Oh, okay. All right, I'll do that. That works for me. Wonderful. Fire away then. So I'm in which case, it's a reason. So it'll be a reason fighting check then. Uh, one fighting. thing I will say, as as you are targeting the one that is carrying this sharp, I'm going to increase the diff the challenge uh, the, 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 the complication range on this one to an 18. With Which that 18 meaning your third spell will hit her and not the creature. Yeah. Gotcha. Fantastic. Okay, that's fair. Also, that's uh, another reason why Bodhi freaked the hell out because one of his compatriots just did magic before. Well, I tried to tell you earlier. <laughs> it's a thing I know and can do. I'm a, I'm a magician. Oh, yeah, sure. No, oh, God. Is it a magician? <laughs> oh, magic. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, okay, sorry. Reason, reason fighting. Yeah. Reason fighting. Reason fighting. That can work out. Great. I like the confidence. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, okay, okay, that's good. Uh, that is, <laughs> uh, two successes and a 20. Oof. Whoops. I'm new at this. It's my first day. It's, it's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> you fling the spell forth. The spheres forming in your hands and immediately darting out as these small balls of unearthly light that fluctuate and boil in and out of each other uh, at rapid pace. They get maybe a couple of feet away from you before they simply gather into a single ball and implode. Ah, well. Doing so less than a dis uh, less than an arm's length from you. Ah, well. Which I has a distinct, distinct downside that you're going to just take the damage for I'm them. I'm right there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you to roll five damage dice against yourself, please. Oh, you got it. Uh, these will also have uh, the downside of every five or six you roll, or the effect, you'll generate one threat. Okay. Uh, remind me, three, need, I love it. three to four, nothing happens, right? Or three to five, nothing happens? Three to four. Three to four. Okay. I'd love uh, how quickly okay. this has gone south. <laughs> <laughs> just immediately. We are like, our own worst enemies. Yeah. Okay. Those yachts are like chumps. Uh, two and a six. Everything else was a three or four. That's really good. That's decent as all hell. Yeah. Okay, so you Keep generate working. one threat out of it, um, and you take three damage, which is okay. immediately put down. Uh, as that's going to be, I believe, it is physical. Um, <clears throat> so it's only going to be reduced by armor, not by your courage. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So that is two, two then, yeah? That'll be it. Nice. Beauty. 
I say the spell okay. explodes maybe an arm's length from you and just sends you reeling back a few steps yeah. as it just sends out this horrendously overheated liquid light that makes contact yeah. with your arms, your gloves, and just burns away at whatever it touches. You have yeah. to recoil away to stop yourself from the worst. I will take notes on how this has backfired. <laughs> you. You survive. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just jotting it down in my book. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> As your spell goes awry, uh, you glance up briefly to see another one of the Migo separate from you, not pushing towards you, but pulling away, immediately darting up into the sky to follow after the first. You see it fly up beneath it, a pincer reaching up and trying to snap at Julia, uh, Julia's leg with the intent of pulling it, uh, pulling them in different directions. Oh, Julia! Oh! oh. Oh no! Oh, dear. oh no! It's going to make an attack. Just kick it. Just, just kick it off. Just kick it off. Shake it off. It's, no, it's... And as the, as as you're rolling, uh, stress, mental, and physical, that it, it's all they compile into the same bar, correct? Correct. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Its claw snaps around your ankle and immediately just starts to pull down as oh. it hits you. Ugh. <laughs> Don't say that. You take five damage. Ooh! Okay. Is it is it right that five if you accumulate five stress that's an injury? If this isn't absorbed by the armor, correct. If this isn't absorbed by armor, it will just tear it away. And at this point, I'm gonna have to. Oh yeah. Push that the flak vest isn't really gonna help much in I this end, scenario. Guys. My, my boots are heavy duty, but they're not that heavy duty. Um, <laughs> you feel yeah, so your I, ankle. Sorry, I, I, have one, I, have, I have one injury now. As you feel your ankle snap and your leg <sighs> pop out of its socket. <sighs> the increased pressure pulling down, it doesn't so much as pull out of its socket as you start to feel the meat around your thigh start to tear blood begins to protrude out and starts to leak across your clothing and a feeling of overwhelming agony spreads out like white hot fire bracing up your torso and just embracing you as an old friend I then believe it is either yours or Leo's turn I would like to go next <laughs> I would like to get my leg back please <laughs> Excuse you. Roll to get um, your leg back. Yeah, I I would like to spend one of my fortune to activate one of my talents. Nice. Um, since I'm going to be trying to attack during this, uh, one of my talents being army of one. Yep. Uh, Miss you know, just got snatched the at the throat, snatched the mm -hmm. leg. Just gonna draw my web. He's like, I hope you fucking choke on me, you piece of shit. I'm just gonna just em empty the cylinder into this thing. Um. Yeah. Which would you prefer, the one holding, carrying you, or the one trying to tear your leg off? Um, I mean, it's, you know what? I would like to have the chance to have a final breath. Uh, the legs, the legs fucked one way or the other, so. You know, right. trying to get that back. Flop. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a pistol, so we're going to call this, it's, it's a close range weapon. You've got no mm. real difficulty putting it in the right place. Um, so just make me a coordination fighting check. We'll call it a difficulty one, just in case something does particularly go wrong. Right. And as you've described it, we'll assume you're using salvo to spend one of your ammo. Yes. Perfect. That's Far good. away. All right. That is, let's see, uh, co uh, coordination fighting for shooting, yeah? Correct. Making sure I have everything. All right. That is a two successes wonderful you generate a momentum mm -hmm. uh, bringing you up to two and your shot smashes into the thing's face you push the book uh, you push the barrel of the gun into the kind of soft portion that runs between the plates where you can see fungal growths just split uh, spilling out over yep and um you roll damage the, yes the damage for the pistol is five and yeah, uh, using army of ones. I spent the the fortune. I don't need to spend the additional mm -hmm. two momentum if I spent the fortune on it. Correct? correct. I would like to. I'd like to stun this thing as my my additional. Don't blame you. 
Um, because oh. you've salvoed as well and spent a point of ammo, your attack also gains vicious, which means every in, uh, every five or six you roll is dealing two damage instead of one. So, perfect d6s for this. Oh, <laughs> oh 38 long d6s. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, that is. What are you? That's a, all right. So, that is a. A one, a two, a two, a one, and a six. No three and four. That's eight That's damage in total. Yeah. Good job. Damn. This thing traditionally has, or traditionally does, have five armor. Regardless, you fire the shot and it punctures directly through the fungal growths there. You watch as the bullet just crashes up into the thing's, what you call a skull. And you hear it impact into the face, uh, the plates uh, of chitin that runs across its head. For a moment, you don't see any reaction until the wings stop, and the thing crumples and just begins to fall. Let's go for my face, right? It does. Thank God. You are still fifteen feet in the air, however. Is the one still uh, on my leg flying? It's yeah. So what happens is it releases you. The claw just snaps open and it drops down. Um, you watch as it just flies through the air, cr hits the ground and crashes. Uh, more, more parts of its uh, chitinous plating snapping, breaking and spilling the ichor that lies within across the floor. You drop. The claw around your leg causes you to kind of drop maybe only three to four feet before you swing around under it the big downside to that unfortunately is with the broken the leg and the state it is you do have it pull so Wait, i'm gonna roll another point? damage dice against you yeah that's fair <laughs> uh, you take two more damage what? uh do i take another i take another injury since i've my stress has already filled if if that drops you to zero you take another injury because i guess my the two of them combined filled up my stress, mm -hmm. so and so with my stress is full, I just automatically take another injury with damage, right? Correct. Yep. I'm at two stress. I'm out. In which point, the the thing that was starting to form a tear along your thigh completely gives. You feel the skin tear and break. The bone that was held in place shatters. And your foot is severed. You begin to drop from the sky. You're tumbling head first towards the ground. I'm going to allow Leo to take their action immediately, That's knowing cool. at the end of it, Julia, uh, will, Julia will hit the floor, face first. The landmine. <laughs> All you, Leo. All you. Cool. Okay. Can I potentially try to catch Julia? Like, you are to make it at least a little can. bit yeah. safer. Yes. <laughs> okay. You are 100% okay. can. I will call it as you burst towards them, trying to snatch them out of the air. I will say an agility athletics check with a difficulty of two. Okay. You have two momentum in the pool. I'm going to go and ahead and just spend one of those then. Go for it. If everybody's cool with yeah. that. I feel like you Julia wouldn't... might be cool with that. Because <laughs> well, you wouldn't be able to use a second one, would you? Because you'd need to spend mm. three to get a second one. So, yeah, yeah. go for it. So I got an 18, Ooh. a 19, and a 15. Oh, brutal, brutal. I am Julia, I have become lasagna. <laughs> you, took one, you took one with you though, That's, that was great. <laughs> you sprint forwards, 
watching as Julia descends in front of you, your arm outstretched, fingers brushing briefly against her arm as she passes you. Her head impacts into the floor and you watch her neck twist. Julia. This is a moment I would bring up something that I had hoped not to have to bring up. There is an additional, final way of spending fortune. And that is to stop yourself from dying. You were merely rendered unconscious. You will still be taking this third injury. Yeah, I've got the, the one fortune left. So, luck of the Irish indeed. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll spend, spend that. It then. Yep, I'll spend it and take it somewhere else in my, my poor ravaged body. You watch as, as I say, Julia hits the ground face first, her neck twisting, and you hope as you watch her hit the ground, not snap entirely. Blood rushes from the injury on her leg, from the stump that was once her foot, and now from the heavy, heavy impact wounds rushing across the left side of her face. Her nose has been pulped, her eye shot. Thief embedded in the ground and around her. And as you look just for a second, you see the loosest amount of breath pass from her lips and disturb the blood falling around her mouth. And my cat's here. <laughs> <laughs> Omen of death uh, indeed. Yeah. Can I just go over to Julia and just like try to just like give her just a little bit of comfort? Like you lean down, reaching out for her, and as you do, you realize that maybe a foot or so from her is the box she was carrying with her into the sky. As you reach down to her, you then become aware of the shadow that begins to play across your uh, play over the ground from behind you. As you glance up to see the third creature descending towards you and the box. As it takes its action. Woo. It makes an attack against you. That's fair. <laughs> A single claw impacting into your side and dealing you six damage. Uh, uh. So a fun fact about Leo is he doesn't have armor or courage for that matter. The blow cracks into your ribs, sending the, sending them in multiple portions from the right side of your body into your lung. The weight of the impact lifts you from your feet and sends you sprawling to the side. You glance briefly up at the thing as you see its other pincer lance down, snatch the box, and immediately pull up from the ground and start flying off towards the castle once again. The impact has definitively taken the wind from your lungs, but you still feel that you're able to move, if only haphazardly. As it's back to all of you, as the creature leaves. There's two of these guys left, right? Two of them in the air, currently yeah. heading back to the castle, yes. Oh, still on the field? Okay. Uh, Bodhi, you want this one, or are you you I'm... hiding still? I'm happy for you to, if you've got an immediate uh, thing you'd like to do, um, please, by all means. Um, and I'm happy to jump in later. Okay. Um, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try my, my fancy little little yeah. ears again. Yeah. And I only need two of them this time. 
Who can ask for more? Yes, well, exactly. You have one momentum in the pool. Um, I'll take it. Why not? Yeah. Why not? We're here. Uh, uh, back sheet. Like me poorly last time. Stop those Sorry? amigos from being me gone. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Okay, now we're talking. Hey. That is three successes. Oh, awesome. You generate the momentum back. <laughs> and you roll your damage. All right. If How I believe for that, uh, that'll be six damage. Yeah, we love this. Fantastic. Um, you can also, as yes. this is physical damage, Listening. it will go against their armor, which I mentioned earlier was a total of five. Quite strong, yeah. However, by my maths, you have two momentum left. You can spend that two momentum to give this attack piercing. Absolutely doing that. Don't got to explain oh, it, I'm on board. Yeah. Two momentum to like give it a critical, like a, a extra kind of... So, yeah, on play. a five or a six, you're now piercing two. The which effect. means for yeah. every five and six, yeah, you, roll, you ignore two points of armor. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for that. Spirit it. gun, that some bitch. Yes, them. <laughs> so, uh, that's five hits. That's a one, a two, two fives, and a one. Ooh. The two balls of light spring from your hands and immediately oh. charge through the night after the creatures. As they start to just about pass towards the castle, the light catches up with them, spitting bulbous patterns into the sky and just holding in place before dissipating. As they crash into the backs of the things, they burn directly through them, pushing holes through both of the creatures and setting their wings alight, as if taking a match to a mere fly. The things crumple and explode. Spraying the ground around them with a multitude of liquids. Mm. And you watch as the box plummets from their position and just impacts into the ground, opening slightly and sending the blue stone sprawling out onto the floor. Small light, uh, the blue light immediately starting to gather around it and spread. Arcs of electricity dancing off of it. Leo, are you alright? Oh, been better. Um, Julia's been a lot better too. Yes, yes, I see that. Uh, where's Bodhi? I don't know. Well, it appears the castle may be clear now. We can potentially complete our mission. I'm going to need help if we're going in there. Yes. Yes, we shall. The two of you heading up? I'm going to make sure Julia is okay first. Or at least as okay as possible. <laughs> You lean down next to her. Make me a reason medicine check with a difficulty of one. Okay. Uh, do I have medicine? No. Good. All right. That's fine. Uh, okay, that'll do. Uh, oh shit. That's uh, a one and a, a meter bead and eleven. So. Oh. Nice. So, then you generate two momentum off of that, bringing you back Hell up yeah. to two. You have a quick glance over her. It's not difficult to see she is in a bad way. The missing leg, uh, correction, the missing foot, torn up leg, pulped face, and if not broken, definitively fractured neck. Spells that out for you easily enough. However, she is still somehow clinging to life. Hell she yeah. needs medical care and she needs it soon. But she still draws breath. Uh, oh, before we head up, do I still see the M60? Is that still on the ground from where Bodhi dropped it? Yeah, he didn't take it with him. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up. And hand it to Leo. You wonder... 
Do you know how to use this? It's like Julia was saying, point and click, right? Yes, point and click. Be ready. I'll, I'll grab it. You take it. Bodhi, you can see them from your hiding place. Yes, I was I was just going to um ask um like how is uh like are we do we have to run this into a second session or are we looking at a conclusion today? Just I'm just trying to determine what I oh, do yeah, based yeah, yeah. on Yeah. Mm -hmm. You you should be fine. Yeah. I'm fairly sure we can draw this. Um I think Bodhi will he, once he sees this and once he sees that being kind of a lull um, and he hears the quiet for the first time he will with a blank stare um, slowly trudge back uh, to where the others are um, just almost looking past them um, as he as he comes closer into your line of vision Dietrich are you all right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, Good. It's about all he can muster. He, like, almost looks here, and he looks down at Julia and just stares at the wound um, and can't really take his eyes off of the mess and the viscera. Oh. Julia, I'll, I'll say that you're just about there enough that if you want to splutter out some words, feel for more than free. It's okay. You did good. You did good, Charles. Is there any mine on I don't believe it's armed no Split. the fucker with the temp the tail's coming back it's... oh Galilee's get him yes yes he can Ugh. That's all I say, but I think I'm gonna take a, a, a quick nap. <sighs> say the, say the only meant to be fairy tales. The fairy tales have come true. No one knows this is a fairy tale. Far from it. Well, in classical iterations of fairy stories, they were generally a little bit more... Okay, yes, we can get into that later. You know what I mean. Yes, it's, yes, Tell the Irish one what the fairy tales are fucking like. <laughs> Not, uh... Not as nice as, as the one may have been told. Shall we? Sh shall we what? Complete our mission. It's a mission? Recover the crate in the tower. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the mission. Right. And he doesn't move. As you... <laughs> Until we start moving. <laughs> As you oh. talk, the... Please, no, go on, Gord. Um, I was just going to say, I'll kind of put my hand on the back of Bodhi, supporting him as much as he's supporting me right now with that fun little rib. And just kind of gently push him along with us. Yeah. He'll, he'll give under your, your weight and your push. It's just more motor functions firing as in, instead of any purpose. As a, as a group, you limp your way up the hill. As you approach 
the blue light emanating out from the castle becomes more and more violently vibrant. Arcs of lightning intensify, current turning from blue to purple to red to incandescent colours that defy imagining, that burn the eyes to even perceive. Still you trudge on until eventually you reach the gate, passing through it as you feel the air around you electrify, the hairs on your arms and the back of your necks and your head standing on end, this blistering heat that pushes out through the gateway, almost forcing you to push through it just to draw closer and closer. You stand on the precipice and need to make the decision to walk through. As even beyond the light, you hear the sound of more buzzing, of more clicking, of more pincers closing around metal. Do you walk through? Hell yeah, I'm going. Yeah, yeah I think if, if Bodhi is being guided, he will just continue just an, uh, a slow trudging march forward. You step through into the open castle that lies beyond, and inside you see four, uh, three more of the creatures skittering along the walls as you see great complex alien machineries latched to the walls on the southwest and northern sides. Arcs of lightning dancing between them and meeting in the center to a Singularize, uh, singularity of electricity and light that dances around a small, almost impossible to perceive, tear. A spot in the space that doesn't exist, that all the heat seems to be emanating from. The creatures pay you no mind, simply scattering from one machine to the other, their claws and pincers playing across its surface briefly as they lower down mandibles extend from the fungus to interact with the alien machineries. And lying apart from all of this, maybe ten or so feet from the center, you see a single open crate. Its contents spilled across the floor and two corpses reaching out to it, the men you sent to their deaths earlier. Their bodies rent in twain, arms separated, heads bludgeoned open, and grey matter spilled onto the floor. Just lying beyond the end of their fingertips, you see a strange weapon, a long tube with a large green gem embedded at its base. Light, uh, green lights just rushing around it. What do you do? We may be decisively outmatched here. Think Bodhi again. It's he is malleable to touch uh he's looking past looking through if, if no one stops him it's just he's gonna continue walking forward into the space it's just onwards and forwards no thought just movement you keep stepping forwards the light intensifies the energy of the electricity continues to vibrate through the air and at this point lightning starts pulsating out and arcing across the floor sending great spurts of dirt and mud into the air as great chunks of the earth are just disintegrated at a touch a single arc whips just above Bodhi's head sending a whole length of hair disappearing from existence as the lightning arcs straight back and clips past. And the other two, Leo and Frita. 
we have two options Leo mm -hmm. we either move forward or we pull back and potentially call in reinforcements I don't know if our reinforcements will get here before the Germans well you saw what those things did to one of us the Jerry's not have too much of a stance, chance against them true but please we could always see if the bomb might do anything go out grab it throw it in and do our best with that yes and does oh. the, the the bomb from the uh, from the booby trap uh, but Julia also has a, a Mills bomb on her that she's not going to be able to use so you guys have two have two bombs. One is th one is thrown. One is set to be a a placeable. Mm hmm. Well, we do love a bomb. I think I think you may be onto something. And we should probably grab Bodie. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll Annapurna will move forward and just as quietly as she can just kind of pull Bodhi back towards the team you reach out and take Bodhi even moving as quietly as possible you get the implication uh, you get the rough feeling that one of the things does note you and simply doesn't care that you're there you wrap your hands just around Bodhi and just pull him back an arc of lightning snaps into the ground next to the two of you as I spend a single point of fret and a small amount of it lances across catching both of you in his energy uh, and you both take I wasn't meant to do that five damage five damage uh, uh, that's that five physical stress bad? Physical? It's physical oh. stress. Okay, um, well that's not great for me. But... I have zero armor, and I'm already on two stress, so that puts me on a total. That's seven stress and definitely into the injury category. Yeah, the I'm, arc on, of I'm lightning. on five stress. Okay. The arc of lightning catches your leg and sends a, again, this staggering feeling of pain and white-hot anguish uh, running through it as it severs uh, tendons. Not so much cutting them as removing them from existence. Your leg gives and you drop to a knee. It doesn't hurt anymore because it doesn't exist. There's nothing there to send the pain. The nerves are gone. Oh! Somehow worse. I just um, broke my neck. Thank you. That sucks. <laughs> I also so, want to say. Yeah. So I was at six stress. That put me at eleven stress. Which isn't even a thing. So. If that puts you over your max, mm -hmm. the arc also catches you, and does much the same. Your outstretched arm that was just clinging to your allies catches another bolt which rushes across its uh, across the forearm again you feel it just slough away as if it was never there in the first place your hand looses feeling everything from your wrist down to your elbow half you just hold there for a moment, glancing down to see the pure white of the bone exposed. The marrow inside visible. Damn. And yeah. you get a feeling that it's main, it may not have been here, but as you glance up and just see the cascading light and throbbing pulsations of that tear, you know where it is. Hmm. 
Bodhi will look up at you from where he's taken a knee. They are just stories. We are just stories. Let us return to the pages. Does not matter. Anything from the rest of you? Bodhi will feeling uh, the the absence of what has been taken to him. He will try to get back to his feet and try and push against what resistance there is to head towards the light. You pick yourself up and walk forwards. Another arc of lightning snaps out and catches your arm. Removing it. Another catches your stomach. There is no blood. There's nothing to pump it. The next arc catches your side, your chest, your face, and with every step forwards, there is less and less of you. Less and less of you here. And a breathe. Leo, I think we should go. Leo. I think Leo's going to try to move where Bodie is going as well start making it making their way oh i'm going <laughs> i'm out the door the Brisa, best part about research back. is Watch. learning so i can come back stronger <laughs> yeah <laughs> bakshi has left the building <laughs> you step away just leaving Leo and uh, Bodhi to their fates as you watch Bodhi hit the center as a pulsation of light spreads out and just takes him. Leo, you reach out watching as again your fingers just slowly as they push in towards this rapidly expanding ball of energy just disappear before your very eyes. Slowly you watch your fingers, knuckles, wrist, hand and everything dissipate and what worries you more than anything other than the clarity of its sensation is that it feels right Anna Parita from the other side of the wall as you dart away under the shadows you cast your eyes back ever so briefly due to a change in the colours the blue the reds the incandescence pulsates one last time into a blinding white. And then there's nothing. There is no light. There is no castle. As you step out of the building, or where the building once was, you turn to see nothing but the crater as if the area had just been scooped up and taken the moon still hangs high in the sky sun uh, the stars sparkle above and all you can see as you stare up into it is the shadowy silhouette of the Migo flying away. Damn. And that is Operation Ultimatum. Ah! Ah! That is exactly how Love Staff growth, bleh, Lovecraft stories end. Perfect. Well done. My god. Mm. <laughs> poor Julia. Poor, every, poor everyone. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm going to have so much Thank paperwork you. to do. Yeah. <laughs> so much paperwork. <laughs> Adaprita survives. You leave 
disappearing off into the forests to whatever end you seek. But I would say for all of our wonderful viewers, for those who have um, stuck with us throughout, and to the one person who put out the request for a critical injury that I misread, um, <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> that is that is perfect, because Julia is definitely not the first nor the last soldier to snuff it because of a clerical error. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in World War II. Oh, man. You're not even remotely wrong, my man. Well... Oh my god. I, I just want to say wow. a big, big thank you to everyone who's been part of this, our viewers, our wonderful tech staff, um, and of course, four of you could not have asked for a better setup there. Thank you very much, all of you, for your wonderful role-playing, for the brilliant interactions you offered, and for suffering through that. So I think yeah, yeah. now is a brilliant time for sign-offs from people, so I'll pass pass the mic over. Please, Corey. Lead the way, say goodbye. Yeah, so I was Leo today. Um, Rip Leo, if I guess, who knows? Um, yeah, you can always catch me over at the Initiative Order or on Pluto Cleric's Twitch channel this weekend. We have two more sessions of Vampire the Masquerade. But yeah, thanks so much for having me, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jesse? Uh, hey guys, my name is Jesse Unicalia. Um, I was Anna Perna tonight, today, at some point in my life. Um, thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. I I so rarely get to dip my toes into uh, into non D and D streaming, so it's nice. It's nice when the twenties turn against you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Check me out on Instagram and Twitter at J I N O C A L L A. Uh, I just had a video game drop today, Discronia. Chronos Alternate, which is uh, the latest in the Chronos series from My Dearest, which is one of the biggest independent game publishers in Japan. It's very cool. It's my first like anime lead, so check mm -hmm. it out. And uh, we had a teaser drop today for The Dragon Prince, so check that out on Netflix Geeked. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you all in November when the season drops. Don't ask me when. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I immediately ask when? Absolutely do not. <laughs> yeah, I do not. Chat explodes. <laughs> yeah, my head will just. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Maxwell. Brought you the formerly engineer Julia Sharp. Um, you can find me uh, here on Separation on Censored on Saturdays, playing with Team Nevermore as their solo, their their running gunning type. Um, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram, though I do TikTok more, Instagram's kind of gone. Um, but you can find me on there at Maxwell Musings. Um, you, can find, you can find my Twitter in the chat. Um, I talk about a lot of tabletop stuff. Uh, a book, indie published book for the D&D supplement just came out at the start of this week. Uh, Raven's Rook, the city of Brand bandits and brigands. Uh, indie publishing, of course, you know, we, we love all the support from people in the hobby. And, um, yeah, on Wednesdays, I record for what's going to eventually come out, a podcast we're doing, um, the, the, was it a, the Shadows of Atlantis that I'm, I'm running as the, as the GM. So can't wait to get that out with you guys sometime soon as well. Oh, I'd see it. Good old Shadows of Atlantis. There's, there's a whole it's nother so level good. of chaos. So good. And uh, last but not least, Sean. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for inviting me onto the stream. Uh, so my name's Sean Flo. I paid. I played Brody Diedrich, um, and uh, I'm a member of Roll to Cast. R O L E. We are a variety TT RPG podcast. We are an Australian award uh, podcast award nominated and any award winning podcast. We uh, endeavour to play a different TTRPG every season, uh, different worlds, original, originally scored uh, music, original story, GM'd by or story told by a different person each season. Uh, we are seven seasons deep. We've played Cyberpunk Red, uh, Vampire the Masquerade, Kids on Bikes, Pop Cthulhu, uh, The Witcher, um, and also uh, Avatar. Uh, Avatar Legends is our current season. So we're about 20 odd episodes deep. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to check us out, see what we do, um, our socials at Roll2Cast, again, that's R-O-L-E, 
um, love to see you and hear from you. And soon we can discuss what will be season eight, which I will be GMing. Um, and it'll be a brand new system. So I am excited. And thank you so much again for having me. Been great. And everyone had a note. We'll see what you can see. And of course, I have been Ben. I am really only on. Uh, the initiative order or here uh, i work for modifius as a project manager and do weird little things in the background you can find me more or less anywhere probably not doing much on social media on try again ben um but hey one day maybe who knows you can come and catch uh, the show i run on the initiative order of chalice twilight roads which is more act on Cthulhu-y bits just not in world war ii or even remotely hmm. in setting but hey there's more Eldritch Horror, which is always fun. And of course, we've all been wonderfully hosted tonight by uh, Cy uh, Cybernation Uncensored. And the stream is heading on over to Sirenscape to invade or raid a separate stream run by Rob Mulligan. So hang around if you want to go and say hello. Otherwise, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks and so we'll much. See you next time, eh? Cheers. Guten Tag. Sag mir schon,